everybody. It is me, Demetra K, and we are live today on this what we call a nice gloomy cold. Off and on, cold. It's like cold out here. What like 50 degrees, and that's unusual for California. So we are having a great day, nevertheless. And so I'd like to say thank you uh, to Donovan for putting this all on. As you guys see, there's a green screen now. Eventually, um, this will be a video uh, produced on YouTube. Also, I'd like to say thank you to Marcus Guyton, who I do not see on here at the moment, but I'm sure he'll join us in just a few. And as usual, thank you to you on Facebook for making this conversation go um, a lot further um, than it normally would with uh, then me and Donovan just talking back and forth. Thank you for joining in on the conversation as well. And so also to those of you guys who believe or those of you guys who don't believe, happy Savior's Day, which that is um, what's going on with the, uh, the Nation of Islam. They have an annual um, Savior's Day where Far Khan will deliver a Savior's Day address um, in homage to Master Farad Muhammad. So they do that um, every year. So today is Savior's Day. And so I was actually listening to the minister uh, deliver his message. And I was like, gosh. Why are we, you know, I, I wish I could have waited, but, you know, you don't want to wait. I'll catch the end of it later. And so, anyway, it is the purpose of the Demetra K Show to uh, promote black love, knowledge, and understanding of all the things that go on in the black community to make us an even better people. And so, what's going on, Donovan? Same old, same old. I'm just, I'm just going through the weather changes that are just just killing me right now because, you know, my joints are messed up. Yes. And- you know, but all in all, everything's good. I'm I'm watching the uh, I'm trying to get get some EFF shirts and oh, some backgrounds. And for yeah. those that don't know, EFF. that's an economic freedom fighters, and yes. uh, we are monitoring closely what's going on in South Africa. Because May eighth, just the day before my birthday, they are going to have the national elections again because they're calling in uh, question. Uh, what's the guy that's in there now, the president? Uh, Cyril Ramaphosa. Ramaphosa. Uh-huh. He's basically, they told him, we'll give you a chance. And it seems like it didn't work out. Right. And so for those of you guys, you uh, will not see Donovan, but you'll hear Donovan on here. I'm co-hosting the show and, you know, putting in his expertise and knowledge and tomfoolery. <laughs> 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 One thing he won't be doing on here is buck but dancing. <laughs> I, I, you know, and I'm finding out all these words because, you know, I've lived a sheltered life being in the military because, you know, when you're overseas living, they don't hate you as a black, they hate you as an American. So I didn't really get exposed to a lot of the... Yeah, know. Donovan's now learning the term buck dancing. Yeah, so <laughs> he's, he's learning what that means and he d- d- really had no clue as to what it means to buck dance. And for those of yeah. you guys <laughs> who don't know what it means to buck dance, it means to kind of, you know, put on for massa, put mm-hmm. on the show and... You know, really at the detriment of your own people. And so buck dancing is a term that came from slavery where um, a lot of what they call bucks, the um, black men would dance for Massa if he had company come over or if he was trying to get on the good side of Massa. Right, show him how would, happy you are. Yeah, you know, he would do something. Or, you know, if he was Massa, they, you know, plotting a, um, <laughs> a revolt over there, you know, so that's kind of what bug dancing is if you will so anyway that's a little uh, trivia for you so we'll go ahead and get started this is monique and so, i'm telling you uh baby this, he be saying it like i'm a problem <laughs> oh you you have been a problem well steve I, what, okay what was it let, 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 let's go let's go you started getting labeled as difficult yes why do you believe that that happened and do you see that changing and why I got labeled as difficult, my husband and I, and my husband is Sydney, who happens to be my manager. We got labeled as difficult because I said one word, and that was no. Now, I said no to some very powerful people. Mm -hmm. I said no to Oprah Winfrey. I said no to Tyler Perry. I said no to Lee Daniels. And I said no to Lionsgate. And the difficulty came in when people that look like me, like Oprah, Tyler, Lee Daniels, and I got to put my brother Steve on the list. Y'all knew I was not wrong. Each one of you said to me, Monique, you're not wrong. And when I heard you go on the air and you said, my sister didn't burn too many bridges and there's nothing I can do for her now. Steve, do you know how hurt I was? But Simone, now let me give you this. Because you and I had this conversation, mm-hmm. I thought you went about it wrong. 
Mm -hmm. See, I felt that you had done yourself a disservice mm -hmm. by the way you chose to go about it. Tell me how I went I, about it. I was cool with you, with your, with your deal with uh, Netflix. Mm -hmm. I was cool with you. The two problems that we had, mm -hmm. number one, the boycott of Netflix, yes. we never gave people a point of action. Mm -hmm. Okay, if we're going to boycott, are we going to not get subscriptions? Are we going to turn it off? Are we going to go down there and get signs? Mm -hmm. The second point, what was coming to me was, this problem that you had in Netflix is rich people problems. Mm -hmm. Cause they looking at us going, you talking about you didn't get millions. Mm -hmm. Well, you got this, you ought to be cool. But when you say, Mo, it's the way you went about it. Mm -hmm. And I want to explain that and I thank you for saying that. Inequality is devastating and it's extreme. And when people said, Monique, do you think calling a boycott was extreme? You damn right. But isn't inequality extreme? So we've got to get to a place where we're unafraid to say it out loud. Okay. What, I would have, what, what I would have loved, what I would have appreciated from my brother was had you picked up the phone before you went on the air and said, Monique, you've burned too many bridges and there's nothing I can do. See, I would have appreciated had my brother called me up and said, baby, let's talk. Because you doing that was a part of me being difficult. But not before that though. Yes, baby. Remember the moment on stage. Oh, yes. See, now that, that, that right was a there. wonderful moment. Steve. No, it wasn't. Oh, moment. my goodness. No, it wasn't. That was one of those moments. See, no, like it wasn't. That Richard Pryor whispered in my ear and said, Say it. You say it. Richard because Pryor did not I'm tell, tell you, you to say that. Yes, he did. Oh, baby. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. I do not regret, as I said on the Steve Harvey show, I do not regret one moment of that night on that stage. No, no. in no. case you don't know, it's too. Mo told I hold your Tyler Perry, uh -huh. Oprah Winfrey, Tell him. and Lee Daniels mm. to suck her private parts. Not my private parts. Well, you said if I had one, yeah. I want them three to suck my private parts. Yeah. It wasn't private parts on stage. So now, then I went, <gasps> I quit breathing. I quit breathing for you. I didn't. What happened to you, Mo, yes. was when you made that statement, yes. the narrative got flipped. It wasn't about Netflix no more. Mm -hmm. it, was, it wasn't about Netflix no more. The tension was all off of that where we needed Netflix. to go. Huh? That was before Netflix. So good. So now when you bring up Netflix, it don't get no win, but you done just said this to these three people. And these three people, yes. not because they're powerful, mm -hmm. but because of who they've come. And what happens is, I told you, we can't cure darkness with more darkness. I got what we you. can do is cure it with comedy. And what I'm not gonna do, Steve, I'm never ever gonna waver from my comedy show on that stage. That's my gift and that's my freedom. And what happens is when you allow people to start taking your freedom and your gift and making it become what makes them comfortable, we then lose. When you called me with the morning show on the phone, I said to you, Steve, my family is suffering behind this. And y'all know I did nothing wrong. Y'all know my husband did nothing wrong. But none of y'all in real time, in real time, was strong enough to go publicly and say, we can't throw our sister under the bus. Because Mo, listen to me. We fighting two wars here. What war? We, there's two wars. It's what your issue is, and it's what the perception of the issue is, and the narrative has changed. See, I'm hearing what you're no, saying, no. baby, and I agree with it when the narrative changes. But if all of y'all said, this is the only issue I have with it, baby, when all of y'all said privately to include Oprah, all of y'all said privately, we, I've done nothing wrong. When you tell the truth, you have to deal with the repercussions of the truth. We black out here. We can't come out here and do it any kind of way we want to. Let me, Listen oh, to me. Your husband yes. can't be the Sydney that he really is out here. Let me tell you They're something. Not fit, that flexing, Let me we got to flex something. a different way. We Let out me. here in a game. This the money game. This ain't the black man's game. This ain't the white man's game. It's this is the money game. game. But I, I'm we in the money something. game. And We're you cannot sacrifice game. yourself. The we best are. thing you can do for this poor people is not brother. be one of them. You cannot We're help them. We're in the money game. Home. But let me tell you what the game is before the money game. Like before the money game, it's called the integrity game. And we've lost the integrity worrying about the money. But Mo, and wait a minute. if wait I a minute. crumble, if you my crumble. children crumble, my grandchildren crumble. I cannot, for the sake of my integrity, stand up here and let everybody that's counting on me 
crumble so I can make a statement. There are ways to win the war in a different way. Today, we are going to play devil's advocate. Okay, so what's a devil's advocate? Mm, good question. Well, that is somebody who advocates on the side of the devil. Right, or both sides. Right, you know, or, in, a well, in a debate, but it's to say, okay, I'm going to see it from the devil's point of view. Um, we, we know that the devil is never up to anything good. And so to advocate for the devil is like, okay, well, let's look at both sides of, like you said, the coin and let's see it from his point of view. So today, I am devil's advocate, okay? And I'll explain to you guys why in just a minute. All right, and so in the past couple of days, we have been seeing and hearing a few. Oh, you know what? I forgot to, to say too. Also, thank you to YouTube and those on the podcast. Lord have mercy. I did not mean to forget you. Yes. Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Pod, Podbean Cast. And Podbean Cast. So yes. forgive me for that. All right. So um, in the past couple of days, we have been seeing and hearing a few celebrities do and say some things that are not on code with the rest of the black community. All right. So what does it mean to be on code? That means that we are... Um, following each other, we, we uh, each other being black people, we have each other's back. We don't harm each other, and we do things to uplift each other. Okay, just basically. All right, now one of those celebrities is Steve Harvey. While Monique was a guest on his show, they got into a heated discussion about a very public feud that she had with Oprah, Lee Daniels, and Tyler Perry over the treatment she received surrounding the Precious movie. Okay, so the blackball. yeah, they blackballed her. Well, she called it whiteballing, for right. lack of better words. She went on. Um, she had uh, it was like a year ago. So she did a uh, stand up routine where she told Oprah, Tyler, and Lee Daniels to suck her private part. I'll mm -hmm. leave it at that. Suck her private part, and then from that point, it blew up and all kind of stuff. And so uh, Monique was on Steve Harvey's show. I guess he was trying to bridge the gap trying to talk some sense into her, if you will. Yeah, I think it was more for ratings. Yeah, yeah I'm sure it was for ratings, because we heard even before the show aired that, um, you know, she punched, or she said she was going to punch him in the face, and, you know, they, you know, got into this nasty argument, which it wasn't all that once you saw it. So anyway, he was trying to talk some sense into Monique, saying, you know, you went about it the wrong way. You didn't really give us an action plan. And I agree with him on that part. But who is he? She's an Academy Award winner. He ain't shit. Well, I mean, he's got over $100 million, too. So, But the point that I'm making yeah. is... <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. He was trying to tell her... you, you And she, he's, he was right in, uh, on that behalf. She didn't really give us a call to action. The call to action is like, hey, let's boycott Netflix. And by doing that, I mean, cancel your subscriptions. Um, go pick it in front of the office. So she just said, hey, we're boycotting for lack of better words. Okay, so um, so this is where all hell broke loose, okay? Now, he told her, he being Steve, told her the following. If I crumble, my children crumble. My grandchildren crumble. Um, and then he said, I cannot, for the sake of my integrity, now this is where it gets him into a lot of trouble, for the sake of my integrity, stand up here and let everybody that's counting on me crumble so I can make a statement, all right? So then he also went on to say, this is the money game. This ain't the black man's game. This ain't the white man's game. It's the money game, okay? Now, as I said, after the interview, all hell broke loose on social media. We've seen the memes. Of uh, you know, uh, calling uh, Steve Harvey a coon, he's buck dancing. And wait, wait, and that statement he mm -hmm. made, real quick. I, don't, I know you. Can, no, 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 no. That statement he made. Didn't he? Uh, the people in Chicago, when his show was in Chicago, that depended on him for their livelihood. Didn't he just pack up and leave to L.A.? Well, he said, "God damn it, no, no integrity matters. It's all about the money." Right, but, 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 but he also <laughs> said people that depend on him. Do you see well, the he bullshit? said his grandchildren and his children. He right. didn't say those people that work for him. Right. Okay. Okay. So he again, so he's so he was labeled a coon and a whole bunch of other well, I should say relabeled because we know that Steve Harvey um is not a stranger to controversy when it comes to the black community and doing some things that just adverse, like for one, going to see Trump, um, and then coming out saying Trump is a good dude, I'll meet with him again, and you know, telling uh, one of the callers that called him from Flint, Michigan to drink, go have a glass of dirty water. Just a lot Never. of okay, you said it. just a lot of suspect stuff. That's adverse to the black community. Okay. Now, um, Floyd Mayweather is another black celebrity that is facing some backlash. After Gucci was blasted for selling sweaters that resembled blackface, Mayweather was filmed by TMZ going into a Gucci store. The paparazzi asked him if he knew a boycott was going on, and he said the following. I'm, no, I'm not no follower. 
I do what the F I want to do. Mm -hmm. Okay? So TMZ told Floyd that stars like T.I. and Spike Lee would get upset with him. And then he laughed. And then he continued to say, now he said a whole bunch of stuff. So I just kind of, you know, cut some uh, bits and pieces. He says, you said they're going to be upset with me. I love it. I love it. I love it. See, the thing is, I live for myself. I do what I want to do. I'm not a follower. You know, when everybody else, um, they say everybody's going to boycott. I say, what? This boy is going to get on a yacht and live life. <laughs> Sounds like crazy. He says, well, um, we all know racism still exists, but that's not going to stop my drive. I got friends from all walks of life and me, of course, Black Lives Matter. But my thing is this. I'm going to continue to go out and live um, life happy, uh, go live life and be happy. He then added half of the people that's on social media saying, don't wear this, don't wear that. I ain't never seen one of them supporting the money team. Now, the money team is his, is his business, okay? And now, from that point, Mayweather um, has been getting an epic roasting on social media from saying stuff he can't read, you know. Well, he's um, an athlete. You know, well, yeah, athlete, but he like so. he really, you know, really can't read and write and, mm -hmm. you know, a whole host of other stuff. Um, negative. And uh, you, you guys get the point now. And we're going to see where his friends friends are when he when they lock his ass up for tax evasion. Well, I we hope he see. ain't doing none of that. We're going to see and where so, his friends are at. 50 Cent has been making memes about him. So y'all seen uh, 50 Cent made the meme. Colored a black sweater, <laughs> mm -hmm. basically colored a sweater that looks like Mayweather's wearing the damn sweater, the blackface sweater. <laughs> and Ti made a, a diss song called "F Nigga," and, for, and I cleaned it up for you guys, for lack of better words. "F Nigga" is the name of the song he made in homage to Floyd Mayweather going into the Gucci store. All right, now, so here's where the devil advocate comes into play. Does Steve and Mayweather have a point? Hear me out. Many people will ask celebrities to take a stand for justice, but the people who are asking them to do that will not stick by the boycott. Case in point, Kaepernick took a stand and or knee, if you will, against police brutality and the injustices black people um, in America face every day. Um, and so we were supposed to be boycotting football because, you know, he got blackballed, if you will, whiteballed. Um, he wasn't able to play. He's been unemployed. Um, obviously, now we know that he won his settlement. So mm -hmm. everything worked out for him. Yes, but wait, is, is he going to break us those that supported him off? Well, that, we can talk about yeah, okay, that. Okay. okay. <laughs> so basically, a lot of us left him out there to fight by himself. Not all, but a lot. So back to Mayweather. Regarding the Gucci boycott, he released the following statement. These people are playing hopscotch. First, they're supposedly boycotting the NFL, but as soon as the Super Bowl came on, they were either at the game, watching it on TV, or mm. throwing Super Bowl parties. Yes. Last week, it was R. Kelly. This week is Gucci. Mm. People boycott for trend, but turn around and still shop at H&M and watch the NFL. Ooh. Mm. Okay. So, here's the, I'm, I'm devil's advocate, you guys. I am playing devil's advocate. Should we really be mad at Steve Harvey for telling Monique to get her money opposed to trying to make a statement, especially if he knows that people will uh, potentially be, who will potentially benefit from the statement will not continue to fight? And let me read this last statement from um, Floyd, and I'll get to every last one of you guys' comments. And so he says, in this day, celebrities and failing artists pick and choose the hottest trends, uh, trending topics as a means of seeking attention and using fake advocacy for the platform when their talent no longer benefits them, he wrote. Jesse Smollett. Oh, God. And he said the same, he said the same celebrity stirring the pot over um, a brand that they, without a doubt, will continually buy are the same artists that enter, in, inject rap lyrics fueled with drugs, murder, and sex mm. promiscuity into um, very black communities you're pretending to care so much about. All right, and so I'm done with my monologue. And so my question is, where where are they wrong? Are they lying? I, I mean, is Steve is Harvey and, and 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 Floyd Mayweather lying? Is it like what? Can somebody please? I'm gonna be devil's advocate, so I'm gonna argue against you guys' point. Somebody please tell me where they're wrong. Okay. So let's get into it. Let me get to you guys' comments and hello to everyone. If I didn't say hello to you already. Let me get all the way back to the comments. All right. Do, do, do. And Tay says, hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, Charles hey, says, hey, 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 D, what's happening? And then he says, awesome YouTube. Oh, you see, did you see my YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> and I should say, too, speaking of YouTube, you know, 
not to say I'm all that or nothing. Hey, hey if, you, if you don't talk talk about yourself positively, nobody else will. Um, I was featured for the second time on the advice show. For those of you guys who are um, on YouTube a lot, you know that the advice show is one is the would you say it's the biggest black media um outlet on YouTube? Tommy Sotomayor. Nah. <laughs> okay, okay, we're not gonna go there. Okay. The biggest black media outlet on YouTube. Featured a video that I made and put on my page mm -hmm. Friday. And he said, hey, check the sister out. She's telling the truth. And so, so that goes to tell you he's monitoring your show. Is he monitoring so, my yes, show? Absolutely. So I was, you know, uh, very honored by that. I was blown away. I was actually talking to Al on the phone. I'm running around in the room screaming like, oh, my God. He oh, you, she only, you only sent me the clip, what, 12 times, <laughs> 15 times. <something. laughs> so anyway, that, that, was, that was huge for me. So anyway. Back to uh, Charles, you said, save your old. I look forward to hearing that message. Me too. I'm going to have to listen to it again because I was busy doing other stuff. We're talking about the Savior's Day message by Farrakhan. And then let's see, who else do we have here? Al says, private flight from the Savior's Day in Chicago to Los Angeles to bring you Savior's Day, Dr. Demetra. Oh, is that me? <laughs> okay. Uh, and let's see, who else? And hello to everyone. And then Charles says, I don't agree with Steve Harvey. However, I can appreciate what he did for Monique. He was facilitating in his own way a negotiation to get Monique one uh, to stop talking shit about Lee Daniels, Oprah, and Tyler, and but to end was, her back uh, uh, black ball status in Hollywood. But she, but she was proven correct. Lee Daniels ain't paying folks, just using and manipulating <laughs> right. folks. I mean, you know, and, and 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 nothing against the person that chimed in, but I'm just saying, okay, if if she's telling the truth. Why would you want to shut that down? Because there was more to it. On the show, he was saying that he wanted, she's very talented and the mm -hmm. world needs her talent. And so um, in order for her to, to be seen and get put on, because he was saying, let's be honest, Oprah, Tyler, Lee Daniels, they're big giants in, in black Hollywood. Hollywood. They right. just are. And so he wanted to facilitate. Meaning he says, if I could get them and you two together, they apologize and you apologize, would you be down for that? And so I can't really... See, um, see if she, I don't know if yeah. she really agreed no, to it. No, no, and, and I'm with Monique on this. Ain't no nigga gonna give me advice when he's with the trap queen. Oh. And, all, you know, I mean, he is in no position to be the moral authority of how to jump down in Hollywood. Did you just call his wife the trap queen? She is the trap queen. She, she screwed two drug dealers that were cousins. That's a fact. Oh, God. But, but do you see what I'm saying? I mean, the way I look at it, he's not in the moral authority. To tell her, an Oscar-winning actress and comedian, what she should do in Hollywood. Do, how many Oscars do you guys see? He's working on it. Right, exactly. He's, he's and and since it. he knows Oprah and Tyler Perry, what movie of, of theirs has he been in? Well, you know, he does have yeah, his right. own movies, though. What, the little, the little bit parts that I can get? No, I'm talking about the um, uh, how to think and act like a man or a woman. Yeah, wait, yeah. wait, wait. A guy that, that writes a, a so-called ghost writes a book. That he doesn't even follow his damn self. All right, pipe down, pipe down. Kicked his uh, wife I, out the damn as house. As you guys can see, Donovan is not a Steve Harvey fan, okay? No, no, no. It has nothing to do with being a fan. It, it's about looking at your record. Right. Well, looking no, at I, your record. I, I'm a devil's advocate, okay? Right. What record? All right. His record, his public record. Yeah, I'm a devil's advocate, okay? And so Charles says, oh, I saw that interview. Motherfuck that coon ass Steve Thank Harvey. Thank you. Sell out mother effort. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Well, hey, I'm the devil's advocate. I'm advocating on behalf of Steve Harvey. Don't you ever talk about him like that. Okay? Big so let's see. Al says, did you ever catch the video? <laughs> the, did you ever watch the catch the video Steve, uh, Steven Jackson said about Monique and Black Media? I forgot to watch that. Mm. But uh, Give us a synopsis of what happened. Hey, Dean, he says, he has no integrity. He a piece know. of shit. Yay. Yikes. See, you open the can of water. Y'all gonna make it hard for me to advocate on behalf of Steve Harvey. I'm trying my best here. And he also said, did you hear Kamala's father shame her? Damn, she lied so much. Her father had to come out and disown her ass for lying. Yep. Shaking my head. Problem is with Kamala Harris is she lost all her roots trying to be... Uh, let's see. All her whites... Uh, uh, roots... Oops. You went in. There are no pictures of Kamala Harris with her Jamaican side of the family, other than when she was little. Trying to be white, she single-handedly went uh, to war with black people in California using Bill Clinton laws that now Bill has openly said was a mistake. She has been left to defend because of her harsh record toward black people. So now she's like that kid that grew up around all white people, 
All white friends coming to the hood wanting to be cool, but she uh, worse than that because at least uh, those kids just want to be accepted. She's doing it because she wants something. She's political. Exactly. Human. She's trying to use you the same way she tried to use a black Jamaican family who came out against her for it. Shaking my hand. No, Kamala. Mm -hmm. Some of us have common sense, and uh, we ain't going to absolutely. Thank you. And we can talk about Kamala later on, but mm -hmm. as you guys know, for the last couple of weeks, Donovan and I have both been um, highlighting um, the fact that Kamala is not for black people. Right. And I, I've been getting a lot of texts and emails from Sororos around the country that said, how dare I? Look at her record. All I'm, I'm going by the they public record. They don't want to do right. that because... Yeah. I don't care what, what sorority she's they in. They like her. Here are the facts. They like her. Mm -hmm. She's nice. So. And then, uh, <laughs> damn, Charles says, Floyd Mayweather asked who? And then uh, Dean says, <laughs> Floyd, I uh, didn't write or read that. I was waiting for somebody mm -hmm. to say that. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. We know that he didn't write that. He has a publicist who obviously wrote it for him, but... Regardless if he said it or not, were they not good points? Like he sure, says, sure. these rappers want to boycott Gucci. And it sounds like T.I. put a three-month time limit on it. It's like, why three months? <laughs> you know, because they're saying, you know, Dapper Dan, who was this um, designer who uh, lived uh, lives in New York or Harlem, um, is now a designer for Gucci. And he's saying, you know, well, boycott them, mm -hmm. you know, until they get their stuff together, too. But it's like, why three months? Right, because then after the boycott's successful, we're all supposed to run, well, because run to Gucci and go people, buy this stuff. Well, a lot of those people are addicted to Gucci. A lot of, we see a lot of celebrities wearing it. But, again, this is devil's advocate. Floyd has a great point. You guys, Floyd or his publicist, you guys are asking everybody to boycott Gucci, and now you're going to be mad at me, but you have some of the filthiest uh, language in your music, you know, degrading mm -hmm. women and just the whole nine, but yet you're mad at Gucci? How about you take some accountability for some of the things that you guys perpetuate in the black community? I mean, blackface, you know, black. we all know blackface is wrong, but you're going to boycott blackface? Or buck dance to music that is uh, tearing up the black community, <laughs> you, you know? <laughs> right. You... you you won't. You want to boycott uh, blackface, but you won't boycott. You know the, the music that you guys make. Some of the things that it doesn't. We know that uh, music, especially a lot of um, harsh rap music, destroys people. Yeah. It is very impressionable, especially on our young people. And so, I, hey, I agree with that. He's right. Well, when are you guys gonna take a stand against that kind mm -hmm. of stuff? So somebody prove Calling me wrong. Calling sisters bitches and hoes and all that. Other yes. Stuff, you know? And then uh, Charles says Steve Harvey and Floyd Mayweather is speaking their language of coonism. There. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, William says no, they're not lying. So somebody is, is agreeing. Yes. I mean, listen, I'm not saying there's not some cooning going on there. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying because this is just me, you guys. I like to look at both sides. See, Donovan is a uh, uh, either black or white. Yeah, I'm in the gray. gray. I don't know I'm in the gray. gray because I like to see both sides of things. And I'm like, well, we can't, to, to Floyd Mayweather's point, we can't hold Gucci accountable for blackface, but yet the people who are holding him accountable are running around calling people bitches and hoes and twerk and, and, right. and, and let me shove it up you hoo-ha. <laughs> right. Now, 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 in Steve Harvey's defense... I Thank you, Tammy. Yeah, in Steve Harvey's defense, I never said he was wrong. I'm just saying he's not the one to have that conversation okay. with him. That's All right, I'm well, saying. hey, I'm, I'm arguing on behalf of him today. Okay. Today. Well, you're about to get your ass All right. to handle. And thank you, Asada. And then, uh, hey, Chris Reese says, I know T.I. Um, closet is full of Gucci. Not one video of him burning that shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, he said three months. He says, <laughs> uh, this Gucci boycott is for poor black people to judge rich people, black people. It's an embarrassment to us as a people. How, uh, let's see. How are we more upset uh, with Floyd than Gucci? A uh, this you. record to Floyd over this record to Gucci? Uh, this I uh, think this is just another plot to divide the people. No, absolutely, of distractions. But exactly. And to your point, so now I guess Ti is now the spokesperson of the black community. I don't know. Is he? Well, a couple of years ago, didn't I? Didn't I ask you the question? Why is it that? In the black community, entertainers are our leaders. Well, in the white community, it's always been that way. That. And right. Malcolm X called that to the carpet too, saying, "Since when do we?" Um, he says, "Well, he basically says, uh, white supremacy will call on the black entertainers to speak to the black community. Why? You tell me why. Why do they get the entertainers to do it? Because we like to be entertained, and we like to be entertained. Mm -hmm. Not they have like Farrakhan is giving a Savior's Day address, and the last time I was watching, it was two thousand people. Now." 
I know for a fact, and you guys can back me up on this, Farrakhan has 2,000 people watching, which is admirable, but uh, some ratchet out the, in the middle of nowhere could be twerking, and she'll have 6,000 views. Mm -hmm. I've seen it myself, and so to that point, we don't, uh, not all of us, but knowledge is not really that sexy. Mm -hmm. You know, but somebody twerking and acting stupid or entertaining, I guarantee you if Cardi B was giving a, a live feed on whatever, twerking. Mm -hmm. Oh, she's she, back on Instagram, by the way. Oh, oh, mm -hmm. thanks for that. <laughs> she'd have a million people watching. And so we like to be entertained. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I mean, you're right. When, when did T.I. become the spokesperson? T.I. is not going to burn any of his stuff. And when is he going to address all the other stuff? And to your other point, is it is divisive. Here we are as, you know, I don't like to call myself poor, even if I have five cents in the bank. Mm -hmm. But here we are that, that don't have the means that they have. We can't, we're more concerned about it than any of them. When the last time you went and bought some Gucci? Never. I've never bought any mm -hmm. Gucci. I, I, you know, I just, I personally have not bought Gucci. And so that's not an issue that we will have. Mm -hmm. You know, but what about the, what about speaking more to the issue that we do have? Right, and, and uh, a, a quick announcement to everybody out there. I am now on the uh, Spreaker chat, so if you are on the podcast and you want to uh, chime in, I am monitoring the chat because Demetra has been getting on me about that, so if you want to chime <laughs> in, you can, you, can, you can do so. All right, now, and then uh, Dean says, I can't stand Steve Harvey. Well, that makes mm -hmm. you and Donovan both, mm -hmm. okay? And then as Al says, when Monique gets her money up, she will thank her. Um, her for it. Mo has the Oscar award, but Steve has a hundred million. Team Steve. Ooh, uh, Al says he's Team Steve. And you know, Al, don't come to my house. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, because again, Steve Harvey is that guy who likes to coon. I mean, it, he just does for some reason. But I heard what he was saying. Yeah, I, I heard I, he was I saying. I don't disagree with what he's saying. I, I mean, yeah, you don't want to sacrifice your integrity, but it's like at some point in time, you, the statement has got to lead to you eating. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to, it sounds like she's working, but he was saying you could be working more, but then, you know, I don't necessarily think she agreed with that, but I mean, what's your, like to his point, what's your end game here? Mm -hmm. You know, are you wanting to stand on a statement or do you want to work? I mean, what is it you're trying to do? And so, uh, Tammy says, y'all going hard on Steve. I need to watch the interview to see what this is all about. Yeah, it's on YouTube. It's yeah, it's on YouTube. YouTube. Uh, and he has it's on his own channel. I mean, I mean. And they cleaned it up from what I heard. Yeah, they, well, depending on how you look at it, some people would agree with Steve and some people would disagree with him. Because honestly, I didn't really see it as he was telling her to just say, cool. say F everybody. I think he was more or less saying, because uh, he kept saying, you're my sister, I to love you. To the detriment you. of your lifestyle yeah. and how you want to live. Right, and so obviously that went out there a different way than I, I, I can't speak for and, Steve. And, but. and Tammy, uh, when you watch the clip, also watch the clip of Muhammad Ali talking about the same Well, issue. yeah, you know, but see, and, and that's that's the other part I want to play devil's advocate about. So um, the clip you talked about was Muhammad Ali in a paraphrase is saying that no, not, no amount of money is worth your integrity. Is what he was saying. Right. And so I agree with that. But then I also go back to somebody like Kaepernick or anybody else who mm -hmm. has stood. Who has stood for black people and we have not stood with, with them, them overall. Well, we know Demetri did because you were doing a show, a Super Bowl Sunday. That's right. <laughs> but overall, we haven't stood with them. Right. I mean, why is it? And you guys, oh my God, I watched this documentary called The Two Killings of Sam Cooke. It mm -hmm. blew my mind mm -hmm. because a lot of people only really knew of Sam Cooke to be a singer, you right. know, a gospel singer that transitioned over to secular music and he had the fabulous song, A Chain's Gonna Come and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. But Twisting the Night Away. Yeah. All, yeah. Well, no, that's not. That was... Um, you talk about the Isley Brothers, but no, but he had one too. Uh, you, 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 yeah, I know what you're talking Jackie, about. Jackie, you talking about Jackie Wilson? That's what you're talking about. Okay. No, he had the Twisting the Night Away. Did he have that too? Okay, yeah. well, all right. But he was an advocate for his people, uh, activist for his people. And if you watch it, I don't want to give it away. You, you understand what I'm saying. But we have let people like that down. And this was in the early 1960s. Mm -hmm. We have let people like Megger Evers, Mal Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Marcus. We have continuously let them down. Because as we always talk about on here, we are no further than we were um, since the 60s when we got civil rights, if you will. And so if I'm playing devil's advocate, it's like, well, does Steve have a point? You're going to make a statement for what and for who? 
are these people overall going to, because you guys remember too, Monique got taken the task. She was called all kind of stupid. She needs mm -hmm. to shut up. Her husband is all kind of stuff. And now we are team Monique. Mm -hmm. And so I know I am. And Terry says, Kamala and Steve can't stand either one of them. <laughs> Y'all throwing them uh, both in the same boat. Mm -hmm. And Larry says, right on. And then, uh, Terry says, truth. And Larry says, um, love your hair. Carry on. Oh, thank you. Uh, and then Dean says, I tell you one thing. I love guys. And I want, I think he said, I love you guys. And I want you and Donovan to make a promise to us right now that when you guys get your daytime spot on BET, <laughs> that you will still take comments. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I don't know. It's gonna be real. No, we're, we're not going on uh, BET. I don't know if BET gonna have it because you know they ain't really for us, right? Um, um, but yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but you know, uh, the, the new media is, is actually on Facebook, and it's all these different outlets because now we're Facebook, speaking to YouTube, each other. Yeah, absolutely. we're really speaking to each other. And Al says, I had a friend who did some social media marketing and PR work for the group YouTube. He wound up quitting because they expected everything to be done pro bono. You know, you a fool. Because Bono actually. Mm -hmm. Is the lead singer? Yes. Yes. And uh, Steve says, oh, he's, so he's tagging somebody in. So Terry says, um, Floyd was right. The music that we we need to start at home with our um, taking uh, negativity out of our homes. Then start with the rest of the world. So yes, where was the lie in what um, Floyd Mayweather said? Where was the lie? Exactly. Yeah, okay, he caught me going in the Gucci. But to his point, it's like, okay, well, who the F is T.I.? Who is Spike Lee? And I love Spike Lee. Yes, and, and another question is, if you can afford, uh, you, you know, who is anybody to tell him where he should and should not spend And that's money. what he was pretty much saying. Yeah. Like, I work hard. I save his money. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and again. He didn't I, save it. He spent it. But, you know, <laughs> I, I like Floyd Mayweather. Not, the, the, it, has he done some things that's kind of questionable? Yes. But I want somebody to argue this with me. Has Floyd not hired um, black people, does he not have black people on his team? Yes, he does. I mean, he has his own company. He moved away from, was it, the Golden Boy Productions, right. HBO and all of that. He took, mm -hmm. he made his own company and hired black people. And so, if that ain't pro-black, what is? Right. You know, just because he doesn't want to go uh, boycott Gucci? I mean, what does him not buying Gucci do for us? Uh, quick question. Didn't Malcolm X say this? What is good of, ha of having social equality if you ain't got no damn money in your pocket? I mean, I'm just saying. So if he's if, if Floyd made with a pro-black by hiring black people from the black community, I mean. Mm -hmm. but, but it goes back to the point of when you got money, you become equal. You can, you can, yeah, you can have a better seat at the yes, table. exactly. And Al says if Monique money was right like Steve, she wouldn't hold a grudge and be as bitter. I mean, yeah, but I, I, you know what? Because like I see Monique as a martyr in this. I see her as yeah. falling on the sword. Yeah, maybe it's a little self-serving. I mean, obviously, you can same thing with Kaepernick. I mean, he didn't, you know, he got blackballed or whatever. But got paid. she's making a, a bigger point, though. At some point in time, we got to stop allowing people to do any and everything to us for money. I'm sure, you know, maybe it was a quip that she said, you know, was told everybody to suck her D or whatever. Mm -hmm. But she continued on with that. I'm sure at some point in time she could have muted herself and said, you know, haha, I'm just playing. But she took it further. So she knew she was going to be sacrificing something. And then, uh, hey, Robin says a lot of these rappers are not what they portray to, uh, to be playing oh. for names. Um, brainwash. No, absolutely. Oh, yeah. We know that lease cars, lease something. They ain't got a dime in their damn pocket. Right. Yeah. But the, it's the rest of us, not mm -hmm. us, but those of us who will not think past, you know, the talking mm -hmm. points would think that's how real life is. And then um, uh, Terry says, absolutely, replying to Al. And Terry says, I wouldn't buy any Gucci. I think it's gaudy and overblown. Mm -hmm. Me too. I I'm a simple person. I would never spend. I I'm hearing people are spending $5,000 on uh, Gucci jackets. Seven million Americans are late on their car payments. What does that tell you? And they you? got a Gucci jacket, though. <laughs> right. uh, and then uh, Ronnie also said, the problem is that our people will not stand together. Right. So why are we mad at Floyd? Why are we mad at Steve, mm -hmm. you know, for saying, you know, Floyd, I'm getting my money. I'm going to do me. I'm getting on this yacht. And for Steve to tell Monique, hey, you better get these chips. Mm -hmm. You know why the getting is good. Point you of order. They, uh, I saw a Spike Lee on MSNBC. He was on the Chris Matthews mm -hmm. uh, show. And it, and they had asked him about the controversy with Gucci. Monique and Steve, oh, Steve and uh -huh. the Gucci thing, the whole cabinet. And the whole time while he was on there, 400 years ago, I guess the first slave... Uh, happened in Virginia, mm -hmm. and it just so happened Spike had the 14th or the 16th, 19, yeah, you know, cap on, and he was like harking 
the about the slavery thing. Well, yeah, but it's like, oh, I got a cap and I got. Well, I think he's probably saying, don't get me wrapped up into this nonsense. We got mm -hmm. bigger fish to fry. I mean, the mm -hmm. first slave said it almost 500 years ago was brought to America. So right. you want to ask me about some trivial stuff? Let's talk about this if you really want to talk about some That's black right. issues. We don't want to talk about the gossip, you know, the yeah. trivial stuff. So, I, you know, like I said, I, I love Spike Lee. Yeah, and, and they were also talking about, uh, for those of you guys who didn't see the movie, the um, um, Black Clansman. Awesome movie. Awesome movie. And then uh, Tammy says he appears to care a lot about his people. Absolutely. And I think you're talking about um, Floyd. And Terry says, I posted that clip of Muhammad Ali yesterday. I loved it with Muhammad Ali when he said he needed to sleep at night so he wouldn't sell yes. off any amount of money. And yes. you know what? That's how I am too. I mean, there's a lot of money that could be made, but it's like all money ain't good money, you know? Mm -hmm. And so Ronnie also say, peace be unto you, my bro and sister. Uh, salute. Same to you. And then Al says, today at the NBA brunch, De uh, Steph Curry's dad, Dale, said his purpose for his two boys being in the NBA was to utilize their financial freedom and, freedom and talent, not just for your family, but for your community service leadership award. And Steph donated his shoe funds for a weekend party for Charlotte Rec Center. That's nice. Yeah, you sent me that. That's, I mean, that's what it's all about. It's about giving back, you know. And then Wayne says, I think it's a double-edged sword. We are just lost as a people, and we have no direction. Well, we are lost, but we do have direction. Most of us just don't want to follow it. <laughs> We've had direction since Marcus Garvey laid out the blueprint. Here we are on Savior's Day. Farrakhan, I'm sure, is delivering the blueprint, as he always does. And so it's not that we don't have direction. We just have a lot of schism in the black community. Oh, we don't listen to him because he's just got the other. You know he did this. Oh, I don't listen to her because... Mm -hmm. And so we spend too much time fighting about who not to listen to to where no listening is taken for our place. And then we are lost. So I agree with you. And Terry says... Floyd Mayweather is a savvy business person and he's absolutely pro-black by hiring his own people, but he's extremely ignorant about a lot of things and he could be quite the juggernaut socially he was in um, the boxing ring. Yeah, you know, I just think Floyd um, suffers from being, I excuse my French, a rich nigga, if you will. And we know what happened with rich niggas is that they think they're invincible. And when they're 60 and have not a penny in their pocket. Or when some mess go down and then they're on the hot seat, you know, because we, they, listen, if they're trying to take Michael Jackson down from the grave, I mean, Floyd, why do you think it won't be you? And so at the end of the day, I get what you're saying, but you're going to have to cross back over to your people's. And if you put such a bad taste in your people's mouth, they're going to do you like they did the, the, the guy who played Step and Fetch It. Black people were so done with him that he ended up dying broke, alone, and an alcoholic because white people were done with him. And black people said, nah, you didn't, you made us look so bad. Like, we could never forgive you for the image you put out there regarding black people. And so, Charles says, let's talk about why the NFL offered to settle with Kaepernick. The NFL didn't want to sell, uh, sell cell phone records that would have shown the world that the racist owners joined together with yes. the racist, um, let's see. With the racist piece of shit, Commissioner Roger Goodell destroyed the evidence that would have showed the extent of the Patriots spying on the other teams of the league. Those um, effing red and white, blue, predominantly white New England Patriots are hand-selected NFL champs. Well, I don't know a whole lot about football, but, you know, I, I think it was probably easier. Most people do settle. Mm -hmm. I think there was so much dirt on the NFL, they had no choice but to settle because... Last thing the NFL, I mean, the NFL is already trying to do damage control, especially in regards to the boycott. So the last thing they want is information to come out, and that's even more damaging mm -hmm. to, for people to say, wait a minute. Well, remember when they got caught last time, uh, Tom Brady and his phone destroyed his phone. It's like, if there's nothing in there, why are you destroying Well, yeah, I mean, but that's just, you know, yeah. that's where football is gone now. And that's why the Patriots and Tom Brady will always have an asterisk, an asterisk. by and, their name yeah, and like, by their right. championships. And Tammy says, I was referring to Steve Harvey. He appears to care a lot about his people. Oh, um. Not the people that work for him. <laughs> I knew you was going to say that. Mm -hmm. Not the people that work for him is what Donovan is saying. Um, I think that Steve cares about people. I just think he's so wrapped up into himself that where a lot of times he just steps in it, and, you know? And, 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 and let me just say this. If he cares so much about his people, why did he try to uh, undercut uh, uh, Bernie Mac? when Bernie Mac was starting to come Oh, up. yeah. And like I said, if he cares so much about his people, why would he take his wife who who stayed with him when he was starting his career, his second wife, this was his second wife, mm -hmm. in a car with this man 
throw her out of the house. I mean, she's entitled to some stuff. And just the, the, the stuff that he did to her, to me, that doesn't show too much care. Well, again, like I said, I think Steve Harvey. For a track just, queen. Yeah, I think he just wrapped up into himself to where he, um, he like I said, he steps in and he harms mm -hmm. other people. Because a lot of people have that ideology. I don't care if I got the bag bar still, mm -hmm. ride for my mama, do whatever. I'm going to make it. Now, you obviously don't want to make it that way because you got to come back down, mm -hmm. you know. And right now, Steve Harvey is one of those uh, black celebrities who was cashing white checks. And so right now, he can kind of thumb his nose at black people and say silly stuff. Well, he did until he met with Trump. Well, yeah, that, but... He, that opened up a lot of people's eyes. And then I think he felt, he felt to realize, too, there's a lot of white people that don't like Trump. Right. You know, and a lot, a lot of white people in the media, mm -hmm. which a lot of people don't understand why his show is being canceled. So maybe it has something to do with him going to meet with Trump. I don't know. And well, then the ratings aren't that good. That's why. Right. And then Al says... Uh, uh, Steven Jackson said in the video uh, about black people and boycotting Gucci, support a black business is not um, what's on you, it's what's in you. No, absolutely. And I think that's really the key thing. Okay, so we're going to boycott Gucci and what hell. Most of us are already doing that because we ain't got no money to go buy no Gucci. <laughs> right. So that's easy. But when you do go buy clothes and you have money to buy something nice, why not seek out a black um, a designer and instead of focusing on all Gucci? Because you know, this is my thing too. We should stop getting in the habit of a getting trying to force people to include us that don't want to include us. Clearly, Gucci is like, I don't give a damn about black people who make this black face sweater. Why do we care that mm -hmm. much about what they care about us? My thing would have been, all right, let's go shop black. If I'm into that kind of you know clothing, I'm gonna go find some black designers. And are you talking about this orientation? Uh, I'm, uh, <laughs> as you're talking on certain points, I'm making sure the points go out into it. the Twitter world. I was like, Donovan, Twitter Twitter world. time for the uh, dissertation over there. Uh, and then, uh, let's see, Terry says, you're right. Um, we do have direction, but we don't wish to follow that direction. Some of us are too busy with pleasure, ignorance, and material gain versus the rising of us as a whole. Absolutely. We suffer from that individualism. Yes. I got mine. You My kids us. are going to a good school. Pull that ladder up. Exactly. Pull the ladder up. Well, you Negroes down there, mm -hmm. I feel sorry for you. Yes. yes <laughs> you know, yes. until it happens to them and they're like, hey, ne fellow Negroes, I'm back. <laughs> uh, uh, a, real, a, a real quick announcement now. Um, for those of you guys that, that didn't get a chance to get your side piece, a Valentine's Day, please go to Shantae Wilder's uh, Stella and Dots Val Divas on Facebook. You can check it out and get and get your uh, belated uh, side piece. Get uh, your yeah. side piece again. But uh, if you get guys hear a lot of typing in it, when, 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 when it comes to a, a live show like this, you have to get... He's to, live tweeting. Yeah, I'm live yeah. tweeting and putting stuff out and points that you guys are talking about. Awesome. And as our show gets expanded, because Dee did expand her subscribers over 700 now, I believe. Eight. 800. Oh, I was eight. We got to put this thing out there so that she can get a little bit bigger and I get my check and I can go on about my That's business. That's right, okay. <laughs> and then Charles says, yes, asterisk by the Patriots. Yeah. And then Terry says, Floyd Mayweather equals rich nigga syndrome. Mm. That's the realest thing I've heard today. I mean, yeah, that's just what it is. It's just like, I, I, I'm a rich nigga. Mm. I don't have those problems. And so I don't care necessarily. As, I don't, so don't want to say Floyd doesn't care. I just don't think he's articulate. This is going to sound bad. Mm. I just don't think he's articulate enough to voice that, and I don't think he's well versed or educated to express that in a different way. Because I think once you see the interview on mm -hmm. TMZ, he realized he stepped in it, and so he tried to quickly yeah, throw yeah. some Black Lives Matter stuff in there. Yeah. But then he was just like, I said what I said type of thing. But don't try to be mad at me when you guys are doing stuff that's harmful to the black community worse than what Gucci is doing. So are you saying box nigga box? <laughs> no, I'm not saying. I'm, I'm messing with it. I mean, you know, anytime Floyd fights, I'm always told, yeah. I, you know, always bet on black. That's my yes, theory, yes. you know. But I was just saying, like the Ann culture thing, or oh, you know, said, Dri uh, dribble the ball, nigga, dribble. Right. Oh, that was Laura Ingram. Yeah, Laura Ingram, whatever. Right. And then uh, <laughs> Charles says, "DB Street, uh, speaking straight truth." I try to. And then uh, Terry says, "Show enough, bro." And Kay says, "Well, congratulations, DND. Glad to see your audience is growing. You're waking folks up." Oh, absolutely. We're trying. No, 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 those Gina. are subscribers, not people who would view, view the videos. So oh, yeah. Well, that, that particular video has over 10,000 views. Exactly. Yeah. And so, I mean, it's coming along. So, I, I, you know, I thank you for that. But it's just, you know, my mom always says slow and steady uh, wins the race. And, and the reason why I say that is, too, 
Oh, he says, uh, he says, loving your hair, <laughs> my hairline. <laughs> but she says, I mean your hair, you know, yeah, my hairline is, it, it, it might be fading with the age. No, I'm just playing. Trust, I know what you trust mean. Trust me, it's thick. <laughs> it's a thick hairline. I, I, I try, I, I don't braid my edges up because I want to keep them. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Oh, <laughs> um, but yeah, so the reason why I say, Slow and steady wins the wet race. I think that's yeah, how it goes. It's yeah. because a lot of times, especially guys, we see people on social media doing some stupid stuff, twerking, you know, and just the just silly stuff. It's like, well, who at the end of the day, who does that benefit? So what? You're getting some likes. You're mm -hmm. getting some followers. I mean, what? You what? How does that help us as a whole? And so, if it means getting the information out there to a few people, then so be it, you know. So, but thank you. And then Charles says, um. Uh, Ann Coulter, Ann Col yes, Ann Coulter turned on Trump. She did. She did. Called she was like, idiot. yeah, she called him an idiot. And I guess it's because he wouldn't keep the country at a standstill mm -hmm. <laughs> to build the wall. It's like, I don't think he's an idiot. I just think he, actually, I think he's smart because he wised up and said, okay, me being a brat is not Getting working. It. I mean, I even pissed off my own base. And you don't want me. I see people you want to piss off as your own base. And I'm dealing with a master politician who's been in there 30, 40 years, 60 years. You're talking about uh, Pelosi? Pelosi? Yeah, Pelosi's like, listen, I'm, I ain't new to this. You are. Mm -hmm. Okay? <laughs> I authored the art of the deal up here in Washington. <laughs> exactly. I'm a multimillionaire. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and Charles says, yeah, beautiful. And then, uh, and then uh, <laughs> Terry's replying to Charles like a Doberman. And then, uh, so Jeannie laughing. So, yeah, I mean... Again, I like to play devil's advocate. You know why I like to play devil's advocate? Because it makes us middle. think. Mm -hmm. It makes middle. me think. It makes me mad. And, and uh, the Donovan man, sometimes, <laughs> yeah. one time me and Donovan did a podcast, and this dude, <laughs> ah. <laughs> after the podcast was over, <laughs> he's out. like, next time, you just follow <laughs> yeah. the lead. Yes, you I follow my that. lead. You know, <laughs> <that>. <laughs> and so we have kind of like this running joke, like, okay, what do you want me to say? Yes. Am right. I speaking on yeah. this podcast? Yeah, I have to. Especially when, especially when it comes to the uh, Don't Believe the Hype show. It's like, look, I'm trying to get a narrative here. What's he was, what? oh man, I thought he was going to do an Ike turn on me for real. Uh, but no, uh, I like to play devil's advocate because like I said, it makes, for me, it makes me think outside of the box. It makes me think past the talking points because in this situation, it's really easy to be mad yes. at Floyd Mayweather or Steve Harvey, because everybody else is mad. Mm -hmm. If Donovan's mad, then I'm going to be right. mad. Yeah. But then have Look you at ever, the record. Yeah. Look at what he's but, talking but about. But have you ever asked yourself, okay, why are we mad again? Right. Okay, exactly. I know Steve Harvey does some suspect things. I know, you know, Floyd Mayweather does some suspect things or whatever. He can't read. Okay, whatever. He got some, rich enough to have somebody mm -hmm. read it to him. <laughs> by, this, by all this time, too, he should have somebody teach him to read. I mean, if he don't know how to read, I don't mm -hmm. know. But... I like to ask questions like, why are we mad again? Right. And, 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 and is, is us being mad really going to serve us in being mad? All right, we're mad at Gucci. Okay, what, what, what's the end result? What, what, what are we getting from being mad at Gucci? Right. You know, did we keep, you know, a good amount of the 97, 97% uh, of the money we give away every year? Did we keep any of that because we boycotted Gucci? I mean, what, what do we gain? We didn't gain anything. And so all this done has brought Gucci to the forefront even more. I mean, I've heard more celebrities talking about, oh, man, I just went out and bought a, a $5,000 Gucci jacket and I can't wear it until the boycott is over and this, that, and the other. And it's like, <laughs> or, or the fur for PETA. People, you know. Right. So imagine how many people are going to get the income taxes. Like, well, shit, I'm going to see. I'm going to get about $6,000. Well, you might not now because Trump, you know, his administration has changed the taxes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> change the income tax situations for a lot of people. But, I mean, imagine how many people are like, well, shit, I got some money coming. I'm going to get me a Gucci something because I want to be on like everybody mm -hmm. else. And so all we've done is raise the awareness, for Gucci's awareness, and the bottom line, that's all we've done. Right. Gucci is now going to go to Harlem, the uh, CEO, whoever the dude is of Gucci, is now going to go to Harlem, He's you know, and go meet with Dapper Dan and have a... So that now... No shade to Dapper Dan. I'm sure he's a cool dude. He made some, you know, put a lot of, a lot of, um, he designed for a lot of rappers and people before he got big. Uh, and then that's another thing. Floyd said, I stayed with Dapper Dan. When a lot of celebrities got the clothes and left, 
and blew up and didn't even come back and get this dude. He said, I stayed with Dapper Dan. Unlike a lot of these people who were telling me to boycott Gucci. But so now, no shade to Dapper Dan, but Dapper Dan is now going to become the spokesperson for the black community. I guess he's going to give the signal and say, okay, Negroes, now you can buy Gucci again. I've talked to him, him being the CEO of Gucci, and he said he's sorry. Mm -hmm. He's going to change. Wait, didn't Steve Harvey do something like that? Oh, he's giving him a chance. Yeah. Nice guy. And he's going to donate. Well, the NFL did the same thing. We're mm -hmm. giving $90 million to, was it $90 million? Something like that. Something like that. Mm -hmm. to, with some of these players who usurped the movement, for lack of better words. And so now Dapper Dan is going to speak for us. Hmm. It's okay, black people. And as usual. Go oh, buy Gucci yes. again. And as usual, we just go right. We fall them. for it, but it's like who that, 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 that I'm sure you a you know dope dude. You, you know, design some nice rags and stuff. But who are you? Because all you're gonna do is tell us to go buy Gucci again to make Gucci rich. I mean, yeah, they might donate some stuff to some program, but are black people who's like doing this boycotting? Are they gonna benefit from it? Mm. So uh, let's see. Al says side piece. Oh God, here's <laughs> a joke. My dad side piece made him a big Valentine's breakfast. He didn't like it and said, hey, this is nasty. She said, don't, don't hay me. Hay is for horses. He said, so what's for hippos? You know what? <laughs> I thought you said you were going to talk to Al. <laughs> I did. As you can see, they're, they're readable. I right, can read okay. them now because before I was like, oh, my daddy might be listening to this. So anyway, so yeah, I mean, I don't see any more comments. And so um, what I would like to do is transition to the... Um, Donovan's favorite actor in show, Jesse Smollett. Smollett. Jesse Smollett. Jesse Smollett. Smollett. Yes. Goes to show you how much I know. I, I, I watched a half episode of Empire at my sister's house. She likes watching all that mm -hmm. stuff. And I was like, is this what we do? Yes, this is what we do. This is what we all sitting around watching. Believe it or not, I have never seen one episode of Empire. Uh, power, star, any of that. I watched Power. I have to stop watching well, Power because it was too dark for me. Well, well here's the, the thing. The kids were know, starting to kill. Yeah, I was like, no, I'm yeah. good. See, here's the thing for me. I'm retired and I don't even have time to Say watch that, that again. I'm retired. Because I thought you said you was retarded. No. It's retired. <laughs> retired. I knew you wanted to say I'm retarded. No, it sounds like you uh, did. Yeah. I'm retired <laughs> and I don't even have time to watch the amount of boob tube stuff that's out there. So when I see people who are still in the workforce raising their kids and they can recite all of these this stuff, it just, it amazes me. Right. And that's what my sister says. She, uh, my sister's a third grade teacher or fifth grade teacher, I think, fifth grade. And she says, the kids come to school talking about, oh, Miss Jones, did you see what happened with Cookie on Empire? Yeah. And I, she says, I don't know what you're talking about because she says, what we're not going to do is me and you, little girl or little boy, going to discuss. You shouldn't mm -hmm. even be watching yeah. Empire. Mm -hmm. So now you're going to come to school and ask me what I think about what Cookie did and <laughs> all this. She says, I just tell them I don't even yeah. watch. Yeah. Like, Are you Team Cookie? Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I don't watch that. But you're right. Kids are watching that kind of stuff. And so anyway, let me get this last comment and then I will go um, into my Jussie Smollett um, thing. And Al says, as D&D, play devil's advocate on the story of the young man and his girlfriend since the seventh grade, Donovan's thoughts are required. Okay. All right, here we go. D&D is it's a commercial break. Okay, ask D&D. <clears throat> so, there's this guy who had a girlfriend from the seventh grade. Him and the girlfriend from the seventh grade, so they're now 27, so 14 years later, have not had sex. Mm -hmm. They're waiting to, for marriage to have sex. He ends up having sex with one of his friend, female friends, and the female friend gets pregnant. And so the question is, who's wrong? Like, I guess on the surface we know he's wrong for mm -hmm. doing it. But the question is, is it realistic to ask somebody to wait 14 years? Now, I get that you ain't having sex in, the, in, in uh Middle school, okay? And you probably yeah. shouldn't be shouldn't having it in high it. school yeah. either, okay? So we'll give you a break from that point. But 14 years later, you guys are almost 30, you haven't had sex because you're waiting for marriage. What is the issue here? Who is, like, to blame? Well, like, is it realistic to wait, ask somebody to wait 14 years or whatever to get married? It is realistic. I mean, to have sex. It is realistic to ask them to wait. If they truly love you, that would be their decision. Okay, but let me, because uh, this is the devil's advocate. Okay. This is where I come in, you guys. I'm like, okay, first of all, it's very, very stupid. To think that somebody is going to wait indefinitely to have sex with you because people are human. The other part of that is, brah, why are you waiting so long to ask her to get married? 
Oh, I didn't think about. You know that. what I'm saying? So point. to me, yeah, if I was her, I'm like, he's at, he's waiting so long to ask me to get married, but he really doesn't doesn't want to be with me. And so the other part that I have to that is, if waiting indefinitely to have sex with this woman was something you couldn't have done, you you couldn't do. Just say you couldn't do it and move on. Well, be I mean, honest. I mean, you know, in in the society that we live in today, people are living together and trying it out, and it's the same kind of. I mean, listen, I. I a lot of religious people would disagree with that, but I, listen, asking somebody to wait until forever to have sex, I'm going to wait to have sex with you, mm -hmm. but I might not wait to have sex yes. with everybody else. Right. I mean, listen, I'm just, I like to be honest. That's just the truth. And so I think the whole dynamic of it was set up for failure. Right. It was just set up for failure. You ask this man to wait until he proposes. He doesn't propose 14 years later. He goes and he tricks off with somebody else. It's just disastrous. Well, true story. I've been waiting on your sister for 30 years and I'm still waiting. You got but 30, in the meantime, I had kids. Right, and I was like, but you got about a good 30 more years in. So. <laughs> and then, uh, so Terry says, I, and I hope that answers your question. Uh, uh, Terry says, I've always stood by my principles. I tell you what, I don't care. They settled with Kaepernick. I still won't watch the NFL due to how they treated him. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I, and that's another good question, too. A lot of people are, are torn. They're like, do we watch? What do we do? Yeah, at this point. Do we watch football what? now? Is the boycott over? Or how about this? They started some new leagues, and a new black league is going to be starting up. In March. Soon. In yeah, March. there's a, a black league started by black players that are going to be starting. They got eight teams, I think, in different places. California has one. Texas has one. I think New York and Ohio. The and Ohio players. Yes, that's the name of their team. Yeah, right the on. Ohio players. They have a team. So um, I, I want to go to a game. Mm -hmm. I want to go mm -hmm. to a black league game. Imagine if that takes off. Right. And a lot of these players are going to be playing, like T.O., he's one of the owners, and a couple other people. Yeah, um, an owner player. Yeah, they're going to be playing. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. To, I mean, they're still good, right? Mm. Well, hell, the exhibition it's, game. It's, yeah, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's a contact sport. Right. Where you get a certain age, it's kind of, you got to hang them up if you don't want brain damage. And Terry says, I can't stand Empire. Never watch Empire nor Power due to the negative images portrayed. Like mm -hmm. I said, I've watched Power. Al asked me to watch it. I, up until then, I hadn't watched it. But I had to stop watching it because it was so dark. Mm -hmm. so dark like I said the kids were starting to kill and I'm like okay enough is enough and what kind of message is that sending to people who can't differentiate reality from right you got the kids killing mm -hmm. now you know ghost is this big powerful dude people who don't have the brain, brain of a cricket is mm -hmm. going to think that's how you get down and now you got the kids killing I mean so it's like where do we draw mm -hmm. the line listen kids our... getting killed kids are killing right listen to the music Listen to disrespect you know, within our community, and now they're watching this stuff. So not only they're seeing it and they're hearing it, it's being ingrained into the culture. Right. And Charles says, "What's up, brother Nolan Earl? With brother Nolan Earl, this is one of my favorite spots to tune in on Sunday evening. I don't see um, Nolan Earl, but if he's on here, what's up?" <laughs> uh, and, and Terrence says, "Hell no." And then Al says, "The BET TV version of the Boomerang movie is awful. Oh, <laughs> they redid Boomerang. What?" That classic, nobody can do I agree. Grace Jones's part. That, uh, oh, because yeah, yeah, you put that dog on Grace Jones <laughs> in every clip on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't see the point. Yeah. And so, uh, something you said, uh, Terry's laughing, and uh, he says, <laughs> "Black League by black players too dope." Yeah, right. why not go pussy again? That's like the Gucci thing, you know. Oh, I don't want to boycott Gucci. I'm not gonna buy Gucci. You don't have Gucci anyway. You got Gucci, okay? Because mm -hmm. ain't none of right. that stuff real. But why Words not? Backwards. You're right. <laughs> okay. The the the, yeah. the, it's, the it's ICC. Faded. Yeah, yeah all that. it's backwards. But it's like okay, so we focusing on boycotting Gucci. Why not focus on going to buy black designers? Mm -hmm. We're focusing on boycotting the NFL. Now let's turn our attention to the black league. Because if we go, I don't care what nobody says. Okay, mm -hmm. nobody. Those are gonna be the most like lit, if I can use yes. that term, of the millennials. Games ever? Can you imagine everybody doing an electric slide? Yeah, exactly. You know, it's gonna be roll. entertaining. I'm, I'm talking about the dances that I yeah. know how to do from back in the day. Right. But anyway, that, that's what I'm saying. Remember, <laughs> we always say in entertainment, we like to be entertained. Can those, you imagine? Those games will entertain. Can you imagine? And if they're good, and then they expand, I mean, the NFL will be in trouble. Think about that touchdown dance. He gonna have people in the in the in the in the, uh, in the end zone twerking. Right. And, I mean, can you, <laughs> yeah, wow, <laughs> like shoot. Man, can you imagine how like much fun uh, those games would be? Everybody would be wanting. They'd be sold out every right, game. Right. 
And then so you say, uh, Terry, oh, snap, I will show no go one of those into one of those games. Yeah, me yeah. too. I'm yeah. going. Yeah, the only thing that I'm worried about is what happens every time uh, when a new league forms up, the NFL, the well, they come in and try to sue. And I'm going to get to the Jesse thing too, but I'm glad you said that because mm -hmm. uh, especially regarding uh, the two killings of Sam Cook, they touch upon that. Okay. You, got, you guys have got to, like, I want to talk about it, but I don't think enough people have seen mm -hmm. the documentary because I don't want to spill um, the content of the documentary, but it's only an hour and 13 minutes, but I was just, like, I'm not a punk when it comes to watching mm -hmm. stuff, but I wanted to cry. I was mad. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was just, it just, it, like, it had me everywhere emotionally. It was just, it was, it was a trip to learn these things about him, but to your point about the NFL, it, a it, monopoly. It, 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 it dealt with that in regards to Sam Cook. So you guys please watch that and we can discuss it next week. And so anyway, I'll go ahead because I don't see any more comments. I'll go ahead and talk about, um, he says, Al says, please don't move like that. I just got out of the shower. I can't stop. <laughs> Damn him. Didn't you say you talked to him? I did. It ain't working. I have to talk to him again. So anyway, Jesse Smollett. Okay. Jesse Smollett, and I'm going to try because I didn't have any notes, so I'll try to go off the top of my head. For He's an actor on the show Empire that is produced and written and all that by Lee Daniels. Um, Jesse Smollett is, uh, in real life, I don't know what his character is on the show, but um, it was a damn good documentary. Uh, um, so on the show, uh, so outside of the show, he is homosexual, gay for a lack of better words. Um, and so... January 22nd or so, he was uh, during like one of the coldest mm -hmm. times ever in Chicago was 2 o'clock in the morning walking to get some Subway um, Subway uh, salad or sandwich or something, and he gets accosted by two guys, this is a story he originally told, this is a story he originally told, accosted by two white guys wearing MAGA hats, Make America Great Again uh, Trump's hats uh, they put a rope around his neck Hollering, this is MAGA country. You, and, you know, have calling him um, homophobic stuff right. and racial stuff. And then they put the uh, poor bleach on him and tried to choke him out, I guess, beat him up or whatever. And then they. How did they try to choke him out? Never mind. Go ahead. Sorry. And they ran away. <laughs> they ran away and then he gets away and then he goes and calls the police and says, oh my God, and what I just described to you guys happened. Okay. So over a course of time, his story starts to unravel. He has everybody up in arms. He goes on Robin, what's her name? The, the Good Morning America black lady, Robin. Oh, Robin, uh, whatever. Some damn body. Yeah. Um, she got, he goes on her show. He's lamenting about what happened to him and, you know, all this sort of stuff. But the story eventually starts to unravel. Everybody, every celebrity was, oh my gosh, pray for Jesse. Jesse's a victim of, you know, well, gay did, bashing. And, yeah, didn't he call himself the black Tupac? Yeah, he called him. The gay black Tupac or something. Called himself Black Tupac. The black the black gay Tupac. Or no, not the black, the gay Tupac. Is what he called himself at a concert that he did shortly after he got beat so up. So is he an actor or, or a, a musician? He's both. Or, or multifaceted? He's both. Okay, yeah. he's the multifaceted. So anyway, the story starts to unravel. The police say he didn't want to give up his phone records. Mm -hmm. Um... Which is standard nowadays. Kind of, sort of. that's how they pinpoint stuff. Yeah, but then he finally he gives them a redacted phone record. Redacted means that some of the names of the people he called mm -hmm. are blacked out. Then, as of yesterday, the investigation comes to a 360 when they pretty much say that he hired... Turns out it was two black guys that work... Nigerian guys that actually work on the power... The power uh, at, uh, Empire set with him. He hired them to do... The, to stage the the jumping or whatever it mm -hmm. was. So they're saying that he paid these guys Not to stage the, stage the fight or the, the, the act beating. or whatever, yeah. the beating. And so here we are. Mm -hmm. Now, I said this from the very... Robin Roberts, thank you. Robin Roberts. I said this from the very beginning. I didn't want to say... I never said anything about it. Because to me... Yes, you did, because you told me. You were damn... <laughs> yeah, you I did. said to me, you, yes, but to me. I didn't publicly didn't right. say anything because True. my spidey senses, and my <laughs> spidey senses are good, y'all. My spidey senses was like, he a damn lie. First of all, <laughs> I'm going to tell you why I knew he was lying from the gate. I knew Jesse was lying because he created the perfect storm. The perfect scenario, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm just walking along with my hands in my pockets. It's free.
to white dudes coming and, hey, you're that guy. Because when he said, he said, you're that guy from Empire. Now, what MAGA dudes even watch, watch. Empire? Mm -hmm. I'm not saying they don't, but I doubt it. Then they have these MAGA hats on. And they're hollering this MAGA country and all this other stuff. And then they call it, At you, night. you know, uh, the, the, uh, homophobic slurs and racial slurs. And then they just happen to have a rope. They tie it around his neck. And then they pour bleach on him. I said, you know what? You're damn so, and they're carrying bleach late at night from... Why are you carrying bleach? <laughs> in Chicago. White guys in Chicago. And wouldn't it be frozen if it's that damn cold? Yes, yes. It wouldn't freeze necessarily. It'd be pretty cold. Yeah, it'd be cold. Who... Was that a laundromat around? I mean, did you forget your book? I mean, like, to me, all those things, I was like, nah, he lying. Mm -hmm. That's just the part. Like, I, I'd have believed him if he said, hey, I was walking down the street and somebody jumped me. But they knew you were gay. I mean, mm -hmm. it just, took, I didn't believe it. I never believed it for once. What his motive is, now they're saying it's because he was going to get written off of Empire. So I guess that was his ploy to stay on. To stay relevant. No, not, not to stay on, but to, to stay, stay relevant. relevant in... But my thing is, that sounds like something Lee Daniels wrote. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, can you remember the guy that was on the Cosby show? Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. So he he had a hardship. And so he's yeah, back on his He's back on yeah. it. giving him parts and stuff. And then, so let's see. Uh, and, uh, Jeffrey, uh, I forgot his name. Is I forget, right. too. Yeah. And, uh... Terry says, that'd be like going to those HBCU uh, college games, have times, and it'll be like the new Negro Leagues. Yes, that's exactly what I see. Yes. And guess who's going to be trying to get in there? Mm -hmm. But, you know, I also look at it as a positive. Look at how many great athletes we have within our community. The chances of becoming a pro athlete in any sport is less than 1%. So this gives other uh, people a chance to get out of the community and make some money. Right. And, you know, do a little bit better. And then Terry says, class four felony coming up for old Jess, Jesse. And you know what the crazy part about that is, too? I said this. I don't think a lot of people liked it, but God dang it, it's true. Jesse's rude awakening is going to come when he don't get that white woman lying on black women, uh, black men treatment. You don't think that the LGBTQ LMNOP is not going to support him? Why? He's lying. But he's gay. And you stupid. <laughs> I mean, so you know what I mean? Do gay people lie? Is that something? Well, no, no, I'm just saying. I, I mean, you know, you, you're going to ride and die with me, you're not. Nah. Okay, got it. Jess, Jesse, I want to call him Jesse for some reason. Jesse is on his own with this one. And you know what? He ain't going to get that slap on the wrist. Oh, I don't oh, yeah. on Emma too. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just, I don't know, I just want to just clear my conscience. It's okay, Carolyn. We understand. You're, he ain't going to get that treatment. He going under the jail. You know how mm -hmm. much resources... That he caused the it's Chicago yeah. PD. Yeah, that's true. And he isn't that big of a star yet. Nah, I mean, he, he gonna learn today mm -hmm. that above all else, you might be gay, but you black mm -hmm. first. Mm -hmm. Okay? You can try to pull an LGBTQ card if you want to. The black card gonna get pulled first. Mm -hmm. And then so, um, Terry says, as much as uh, garbage as we have to deal with, he pulls this crap. So now this opens the floodgates for all kinds of negativity and hurts our credibility towards... Um, our complaints of racism in this country. I didn't believe him from the jump. Well, you know, unfortunately, I don't think what Jesse did is going to further the negativity that uh, white supremacists think of us anyway. I think they're just going to say, see, I told you. You know, they, they we're not going to change their minds. But, yeah, I agree. There are going to be some people who try to charge that to the black community. Mm -hmm. But it's like, well... When you we would, we'll accept that when you start accepting the, the stuff that your people do. Like I said, mm -hmm. when the white women lie on black dudes all day long. When you start, you know, claiming that kind of mm -hmm. stuff, then, you know, we, we might think about it. And then Tay says, listen, I have my theory. He wanted to start some MAGA mess. He faked mm -hmm. it with the Nigerians, knowing they could leave the country and the case would be unsolved. And he, Jesse, could be the poor, famous, um, gay black man that was victimized by Trump supporters. Yeah, absolutely. He was doing it for clout. Right. What I mean, because listen, nobody is defending MAGA people, make America great, getting mm -hmm. people Trump. So nobody's defending them. But it's like, gosh, now, you know, people, you kind of open the door for some people to sympathize with them. You're just lying on innocent people because it's like an oxymoron. Mm -hmm. A lot of them aren't innocent, especially in the way they think about everybody else. But now you kind of have to say, well, the, the innocent MAGA people, they, they didn't have anything to do with it. And here he is lying on these people, you know. And then Al says, is it a conspiracy theory that the um, the Justice Smollett story is overshadowing Liam Neeson? Hmm. That is a good question. Because Liam who? 
Right. We don't even. I forgot all about Liam Neeson. Mm -hmm. I mean, so who knows? Maybe Jesse is on the team. Who knows? I mean, like we think things that we hear are just too good to be true. No, there's no way they would do that. No, there's no way. There's no way the FBI would ever be involved in stopping black people from, you know, unifying. Oh, no, just, but yes, I mean, it's possible. Who knows? Cointel Pro. Yes, Cointel Pro. I mean. Still alive. Nobody said it stopped. Yeah, I mean, we know they're out there. Right. And yeah, so, because they're interdicting your show. Eyes <laughs> ain't nobody bossa. <laughs> and uh, Tate says, this was publicly, uh, publicity, for the show, his music career and his uh, brand, yeah, because it was a couple days after he got attacked. Suppose they had a cracked rib and all that. Yeah, He's yeah, up there. The concert, yeah. I'm the gay Tupac. Yeah, he was at the uh, opening. The I don't know if that's what, how he was moving, but I can imagine. <laughs> and Texas TNG said the phone record showed that Jesse called one of the Nigerians before the assault. Yes, I read that too. So it was yeah. like. And uh, this is what we mean by snitching. When you do a crime. It's a snitch when the person that you're involved with with the crime, and now the Nigerians are fessing up, right? Well, they got caught. Right, but that's what I'm saying. But that's I ain't snitching. trying to get deported. Right, but, but that's the snitching. But, right. if, but if I'm watching you guys do a crime and I tell the police, yeah, he did it over there, that's not snitching. Boy, A has cost, you know, this is uh, saving my own ass. Yes, exactly. what it is. I mean, Jesse, Concerned you, citizen. You paid us, but now we, we, this wasn't supposed to come back on us, mm -hmm. you know? And then, uh, uh, Al said, this is going to give the new season of Empire good ratings. I no, mean... I don't know. Not necessarily, because usually when a star uh, does something that is... Very, they write him out quicker. Oh, yeah. He'd be rolled yeah, off of that. And because of the negativity. like, oh, not me. Yeah, because of the negativity and all right. that. Right. And then uh, Tay says, the LGTB community is pissed. I'd imagine they would be, mm -hmm. because... You know, they ride hard for theirs, and that's what right. Jesse, I think, was banking on. They're going to ride hard for me. Yes. I got my gay brothers and sisters behind me in this bullshit. I'm... <laughs> they're they're probably uh, going and taking his tight disco pants and tearing his rainbow thing off his car. Pulled his rainbow card, as well as uh, any toys and dresses he might have in his closet. I'm just saying. You always got to go to the last one. <laughs> I'm just... You always... You just take it a little bit too far. But, I was cool up until you said therapist dresses in the closet. I was... I mean, well, the, the rainbow card, and, <laughs> but the dresses in the closet... Well, I'm just saying. I mean, I don't know what he's into, but I'm not saying I'm against what he's doing. Yeah, hey... Do but you you're saying that's what the, how they gonna do that's it? That's probably gonna come in there. And it's like being in the military where they take your... They break <laughs> off of you. They just rip it off of you. <laughs> they snatch your stripes yeah. off of you. Stop. <laughs> Terry says they're going to leave him out to dry like they're uh, drying beef jerky. He's not yet. Yeah. You think Monique got done dirty yeah. by Lee Daniels? Just wait, yeah. Jesse. Wait for it. You know, and I, I don't hope this, but you hear so many stories in Hollywood of a person that gets disgraced and then like years later they're found in the alley or, you know, <laughs> you, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Because they wanted to be a big star and they blew it. Right. And there's no second chance, especially when it comes to us. <laughs> Terry, you talk about Donovan, my man. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't aim in this. Yeah, thing. yes. He said, "Did they?" He's did, encouraging me, <laughs> right? <laughs> says, "Did they get threatened to uh, get deported? Is that why they folded?" I think they're a citizen. They're Nigerian. They said they were Nigerian citizens of the United States. Okay, yeah, they did. They, they so Nigerian Americans, if yeah, you will. I don't know. And, and I say this all the time: your country of origin is not a race. Well, we know that. So they're, they're Nigerian, but they're for what I said, they're no, 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 but they're, they're young, so they're probably both of their parents are Nigerian and they're claiming Nigerian. Right, that's what I'm right. saying. Yeah, so yeah. they're Nigerian, but for their citizens, from what I yeah. read, I, yeah, I, I they're Americans, but they call themselves Nigerians. Correct. And so I don't know if it's an issue of them being deported, but it's like, yo, this is some major stuff right here. You know, they need to be deported because if you're born in this country, you're an American. You're no longer Nigerian. God damn it. Well, you know, they got up out of here when, they, you know, Jesse was starting, starting to unfold. They was like, yes, and we going back. And did you notice the picture that they put up? Right. They put the picture of the brothers with no shirts on. I mean, I'm, you know, okay, like I said, I'm not a member of the LGBTQ community, but you know, the minute I saw that, I was like, why did they have to do the, put the, yeah, the, sure the, the, the candy some, thing up? Yeah, they could have put more better, a better, suitable picture yeah. of, of him, uh, the, the brothers, brothers, but they're, you know. Shirts off. And... Shea buttered up. Right. <laughs> I mean, which, you know, a lot of people probably appreciate it. I'm, I'm just saying, I know it's the shea butter, okay? No, okay, I didn't know it's all that, but I'm just like, <laughs> I'm like, and, and then when you're a suspect in a crime, why is it when it comes to the blacks, they show the, the people's face? They got to have run down, too, right. you know, doing the most stuff, like if it's, you know, 
Boom Quisha was got caught robbing the store. They gonna put the picture of her yeah. of her twerking at the club, yeah. you know. And it might not be the real story, right? But yeah, here she is twerking a picture you got off of Facebook of her twer twerking. Mm -hmm. And Al says Justice Smollett literally screwed a lot of people. No pun intended on the story. <laughs> Now, he screwed himself, is what he did. And speaking of screwing himself, let's get into this. We got a couple more minutes. We got our 20 minutes. Oh, do we really? Yes, we got 20 minutes. You got somewhere to go? No, I was looking at my watch and like maybe it's fast. It's 420 right now. I tried to trick myself out of being on CPT. Good luck with that. It, did it work? <laughs> no, it, it didn't did work. Not. Okay. So, anyway, speaking of somebody who screwed themselves, uh, Jason Van Dyke. Hmm. Jason Van Dyke is the police officer that was found guilty of killing um, Laquan McDonald in Chicago. The youth that he shot at 16 times. Then he, um, after he shot him, went upon him and shot him some more. I think eight more times. Something like that. So anyway, he was sentenced to six years, almost seven years in prison, which is not enough. Now the uh, prosecutor, DA, is um, appealing that decision saying, you know what? That dude got a slap on the wrist. For murdering this boy in cold blood. Why isn't Kamala Harris in the forefront of that? But she was in the forefront well, of... Well, she's in California. But, but she's right. a senator now. It doesn't matter. Well, she, I mean, I agree. You know. You know. But 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 um, what, what did she jump on? Uh, that one thing where the... Uh, they, Fairfax. Justin Fairfax. Yeah. yeah. She was quick to jump on that and make a statement. Well, always, Why isn't she don't, a statement? don't let me forget to talk about that, too. Okay. Justin it. Fairfax. So, so anyway, with Laquan McDonald. So the officer is now in prison. Mm -hmm. He got beat up the other day. Beat up, beat up. What a surprise. But, 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 but that's kind of unusual because usually if you're in law enforcement and you're a child molester, you, you usually go to a segregated... Well, they did. They had sound like they had them in gen general population. That is unusual. Sounds like they did. They got a hold of them somehow. So Wait, a being uh -huh. a police officer saying I feared for my life doesn't work in prison? <sighs> okay, gotcha. Because you know most of those dudes is in there because of the work of a police <laughs> officer. Let's keep it real. Some of them probably in there for some shit they didn't do. Okay? Gotcha. So anyway, they whooped this boy. Okay? And so, for whatever reason, his wife has this press conference, and she's oh, I can't lose my husband. I don't know what I can do. Oh, me and my kids, we can't bury my husband. He doesn't deserve this. He was just doing his job. Your job is to kill black people? They had a whole press conference. Yeah. I swear, it was like 20 minutes long of her, you know, we need to do something. And then his lawyer, we were trying to raise awareness, you know, People should, you know, he's been sentenced. He should be able to go to jail in peace. And so, I mean, it's funny because it's like, where's that energy when Ray Ray is getting right. heated up in there? Right, right. And then you're appealing to the people. The justice system is where they should be appealing. Your boy Trump, he's the head of the justice system. Right. Well, they're, you know, they, they're appealing to people. And she said, I haven't spoken to him since he went in there. I don't know where he is. I don't want to be talked to him. Does she get special privileges? Well, yeah, she should. I mean, if she's not talking to him, how many of us have loved ones that locked up that we can't see? Yeah, to I guess she's supposed to. to just walk on. Hey, y'all, right. I'm here to visit my right. husband. Right. <laughs> so Sad. she's crying on the news conference, and then she makes a Blonde statement. white woman, right? Blonde. Oh, yeah. She makes a statement saying, well, it was bound. He was just doing his job. It was bound to happen anyway. It's like, what? what? what about? It's what she said. Wow. It was bound to happen anyway. So I don't it. He was going to murder somebody. <coughs> um... And so I thought, the gall. Yes. You got the nerve to sit up here, hold a press conference. People are very busy. Yeah. You know, you hold the press conference and your tears are flowing because your man is getting hooked up or hemmed up in the penitentiary. He ain't special. And he got a fair trial. Like everybody, I'm sure they got their appealing going. He got stuff. more than a fair trial. I mean, he got a slap on the wrist to the tune of where the DA is trying to now overturn it, get the Supreme Court to overturn it because they said the judge sentenced him too lightly. He should have got sentenced for shouldn't, every bullet. Yes, shouldn't Kamala Harris be doing that herself? Because she did the same exact thing here in California. Well, you know, I think we charged Kamala with a lot of stuff and she could be charged and rightly with this. rightly so. But I don't think this is hers to own. It isn't hers yeah. to own, but she should, she's trying to be president of the United States and, well, if, and if she wants to change her she, record, she ain't gonna do that. if she wants to change her record, right. with a, you know, and I had an argument with, with one of my friends uh, mm -hmm. and she's a Sororo, and I said, I'm not against Kamala Harris. The thing is, she should not run right now. She should run down the road so she has time to fix her record. Right. Then run. Well, I mean, I agree with that, too. But, you know, in regards to this, I mean, that's... And I think they were having a press conference to appeal to the um, the legislators out there, or whoever the powers would be, maybe Trump, too, to try to do something. 
you know, to, to save him. But it's like, lady, come on now. Hey, everybody, you go to prison, you probably going to get beat up. Yeah, but he should not have ever been. I've never heard of a uh, police officer put in general population. That is For whatever reason, he was there. Yeah. You know? <clears throat> that's um, not a setup. Like, well, you know, maybe it was like, we're just going to drop him off to her. Right. You know, like they did Jeffrey Dahmer. Right. We'll be back. <laughs> Stay right there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't move. Uh, we, we might want to check the the race of those guards that kind of <laughs> escorted yeah, him. Yeah, it, it, it sounded like it was a group of people who yeah yeah yeah. yeah. No, but the guards might have been brothers and saying, "Hey, I'm we sure get they get like, we'll be right back." Yeah. <laughs> Don't don't mess with him, please. Mr. Justin Fairfax. Okay, so hold on. So Tay says, "I hope they whoop his ass every single day for the duration of his sentence." You know what? Tay, I, you know what? I'm with Tay. I'm with Tay. And you know what the cold part is? When the women. The wives gonna learn to shut your mouth. Mm -hmm. Don't you think you made that worse for him? Oh, you got your bitch on TV. Yeah. Who is she? Yeah. Or what she? What she gonna? What she gonna? Her, think her tears are gonna make her stop just for that? We gonna yeah. whoop your ass again? Right. You better tell her to shut her mouth. She don't tell us what. The, I mean, I'm just saying, if I was in that crowd, oh, I would be like, yeah, man, you right. Who the fuck is she telling us what to do? <laughs> I think she calls him another ass whooping. She got he got a, another one coming just because she opened her mouth. I'm just saying. And Terry says Bill Cosby had to bring Rex Ingram back in the late '60s because he disgraced himself in his career. He brought him back in an episode of the Bill Cosby Show where he played Santa Claus, and he had to use his powers to bring him on the show. He died not much um, longer afterward. Well, I didn't know that. Yeah. And Al says, is it, is it possible for Justice Smollett to date Van Dyke? You know, pun. They might want to stick together if they go yeah, down so for the, you know. Yeah, they he Chicago. Yeah, he, he would go to, yeah, they might end up together. So it's possible they they have each other's back. What's that saying? Uh, I'm gay. What you know? They say that whether gay for the stay. Gay for the stay. That's why you don't do crime to go to prison because you know you ain't about that life. You might end up being gay for the stay. I heard Farrakhan talking about that. You know, my, oh my men and boys who go to prison who end up getting raped, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's just, it's a fact of That is why I, I make sure I don't operate in gray. It's okay. either black, right or wrong. You just scared. You came wrong with us. Well, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a... You're a trying to stay rape-free? Yeah, I'm no, kind of an attractive guy. You got know? it. I feel you. I'm trying to stay rape-free, too. And Tay says she gets to go to that jail and see her husband, Mr. Yes. McDonald's family, has to go to the cemetery. She needs to shut the fuck up and go knit and do some white women shit. I, I mean, I'm with y'all now. There I mean, at, at the time, whenever you do get to do that, I'm sure they're not going to leave you in the dark for seven years. But eventually, you're going to get to do that. You said, if I haven't seen my husband. How many kids haven't seen their father? I'm like, is this 18, 19? Because if it was 18, 19, and 19, 19, I guess I could see where... People will say, that's a good white woman. She needs to see her man, God damn it. Yeah. But it's like, we're in 2019, boo. You and a whole bunch of other women want to see their dudes that's locked up. Get locked. And, and kids want to see their fathers. Right. <clears throat> so I was just like. <sighs> they think it still works. I was mad. Works. I was mad when I watched it. It's like, who does she think she is? She's white. <laughs> that's who I she thinks she is. It, but damn. And Republican. Oh. Makes a difference. And married to a a, a, a murder, officer, right? A murder police officer. You, you know who so I am. So she's at the top of the totem pole. I guess. Who else was I supposed to be talking about? Justin Fairfax. Justin Fairfax. Well, y'all do know that Justin Fairfax was accused. He's Justin Fairfax is the lieutenant governor, which was blackface con conspiracy things. The, uh, the controversy still going on in Virginia. No, it is not. Right. So Justin Fairfax was accused. He's the lieutenant governor of Virginia. Was accused of raping and sexually assaulting two women. Um, up up. To about 20 years ago um, while they were in college. Now, the story comes out that one of the women uh, has some issues for lack of a better word. She had a restraining order put out against her for uh, my ex-boyfriend because she called him over a hundred times in one day. Uh, excuse me. Is this a black woman? Shut up. <laughs> called him over a hundred times in one that day. How many, how many th restraining orders have we put out in these crazy chicks? Showed up to his place. He had to call his sister over to get her to leave. And she said she was going to kill herself. Oh, you're going to tell me what color she is. That's a black woman. Shut up. <laughs> uh, and all of a sudden, so, so, so uh, Justin Fairfax, I mean, not Justin Fairfax, the guy that she was doing this with had to get a restraining order against her. Um, and just, she just did a whole bunch of wild stuff. Lied on the um, some other football player. Can't think of his name. Mm. When they were in college, he wasn't big okay, yet. Right, yeah. But when they were in college, she said that he raped her too. Once oh, he black got woman. big, black woman. Once he you know got into the league, and so this lady has some issues. But yet everybody, including your girl Kamala and Corey and every everybody else, for lack of better words, ran with it. 
Oh, he must step down now. He yeah. needs to, you know, just give up the, the ghost. The Black Caucus, not only the national Everybody. one, but the Virginia one, too. They said, and that one guy, he needs to be impeached. Yeah, they need to be impeached, but it's like, okay, now it comes out that mm -hmm. this lady is just a cuckoo, mm -hmm. psychopath. But yeah, you didn't... Trying to secure the bag. But how was that rooting for black people? Mm -hmm. Justin Fairfax is a black man. And up until uh, th what, two weeks ago when mm -hmm. the governor got um, caught in blackface. Wait, wait. I don't want to make, make anybody think that we're being unfair. Cory Booker also called... That's what I said, yeah. yeah. But I'm saying up until two weeks ago or so when the uh, governor got caught up in blackface, nobody... These women weren't saying anything about um, Justin Fairfax being a rapist until he was um, slated or in line, rather, to get the position of governor if the um, Northam is his name, Governor Northam mm -hmm. steps down or um, as in Pete due to the uh, blackface, Lieutenant Governor Fairfax, black man, was next. And so here comes, he raped me. Mm -hmm. He forced this thing in my mouth. Uh, well, that's what she said. I mean, wait, it's is, not that, me. is that her or the other girl? The the girl that got in trouble with the stalker is saying that he raped her. Okay, I think it's her. Okay, I think it's her. Don't quote me. I think it's her saying that he raped her. But she also said the same thing about a football player. I can't think of his name True. when they were in college at the time. So this lady is not credible at all. But a surprise. remember, <laughs> Corey, Kamala, and a whole host of other people said that the story sounds credible um, and it corroborates the other stories. Mm -hmm. This is what they went on record and tweeted these things mm -hmm. that she, they sound, this, these women sound credible. But now here it is. All the stuff is coming out about this lady who's a psychopath or a sociopath. I don't know. Probably both. Um, but so what happened <coughs> to all this credibility that we were saying this lady mm -hmm. embodied? Right. What happened? Again. You know, and so again, just to kind of go back to Kamala because Donovan is dying to talk about Kamala. Well, I, I want to take a few minutes to uh, talk about Barbara Lee. She is a representative uh, up north, up, up in San Francisco, some yeah. other deals. This, this lady was one of the, the, the only lady that voted against the Iraq war. Hillary Clinton, all these people voted for it and wanted to do it, and when Hillary Clinton was a senator and all this stuff like that. She was the only one, and she was known as a progressive. Now, all of a sudden, she has back Kamala Harris with no legitimate... I mean, she's done now in the party. Well, you got to also remember, and you guys forgive me, I'm, I'm actually coming down with something. Mm -hmm. So as you can hear, it's, it's mm -hmm. trying to get me. Um, but Barbara Lee is also one of those... Um, what's she, a congresswoman? Yeah, she's a congresswoman. Congresswoman <clears throat> who spoke out and denounced Minister Farrakhan. Yes. They, they made her. They being yeah, the establishment. white people mm -hmm. in the establishment. Mm -hmm. Not just white people, but the Black Caucus and everybody. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, the they mm -hmm. made her denounce... Farrakhan for him being anti-Semitic, and she did right. turn her back on him. Mm -hmm. You know, and so I don't like Barbara Lee. No, and I don't yeah. either. But it doesn't make sense. No, I know you don't either. But I'm saying, yeah, yeah, why you would endorse a woman who has the record that she has, and so Barbara Lee's chances of of getting any respect. I mean, come the next election, bye bye, your office is gone. Yeah, well, if you I mean, hit yourself to comment, all I'm saying is this: if you are a congressman listening to me right now, or a politician. Listening to me right now, if you attach yourself to Kamala Harris when she when Trump beats her head in, you your career is over. Yeah, and and, and me and Donovan are calling it now. We called it before. Mm -hmm. Kamala is not going to beat Trump. No. I know, you know, we said some crazy stuff before. I just don't see Kamala beating Trump. It's not gonna happen. She I mean, she doesn't have black people as a whole on her side. As a Democrat running, you need black people as a whole. Now, what am I saying as a whole? What are we, 88%? 88% of the Democratic We vote votes. for, yeah, the black people are 88%. Of, well, we 88% uh, of black people who vote, vote Democrat. Democratic. So yeah. she doesn't have us as a whole to, to secure the win. So that's not going to happen. Plus, there's a lot of white people who are on to her because, let's be honest, her policies hurt white people too. As well, exactly. The white guy who <clears throat> um, spent... Uh, a, a lot of years in prison and she had the ability to free him. He was found not guilty. And you know why she didn't want to free him? Because they turned his paperwork in late. Late, right. Exactly. But then again, too, she says, it wasn't me. It was it, my it, office. It's never her. It's never her. But but yeah, if you're going to be but, the president of something, shouldn't it be you? Right. But but what I'm saying is, Barbara Lee's put, uh, her, it's like the Hillary Clinton thing. They're, they're hitching their they're hitches to the wagon. It's going to be, uh, name them. Corrine Brown, well, she's in jail right now, but, you know, all these 
the, the one lady, yeah, <laughs> the, the, the one lady down in Houston who's been down there a long time. I forgot her name. Um, Sheila Jackson Lee. Sheila Jackson Lee. Yeah. They're all going to pitch. We are tired of them telling us who our leaders are. This woman is going to, and even if it wasn't Trump, Kamala Harris would not win. I don't well, think. I think the thing too is, the great thing is we've uh, talked about this and a lot of people in black media have talked about this. Black people are waking up. Mm -hmm. And that's a huge problem for people like Kamala, Barbara Lee, Sheila Jackson Lee, all those people. Sheila Jackson Lee is also in trouble. Um, she's had to step down from a few, few committees, committees due to some sexual right. abuse that within they say her she knew about right. in her, her own office. office. She's got her own problems. But black people are waking up and saying, okay, we are no longer falling for it. What is right. it? The talking points of the Democrats and the black people um, who, like your Roland Martins and your Sheila Jackson Lees and all those people, the establishment people, you know, are wanting us to vote for Democrat just because. Want us to get somebody said too to me earlier. Well, you know, um, you need to look at Kamala's record and give her a chance. She has these things. You did look at her record. And, and, well, yeah, and everybody <laughs> basically says she has these policies that she wants to um, tackle once she's in office. I said, I think most of us don't even care anymore because we know what she's done already. Mm -hmm. We, I mean, kind of judge people. I go into a job and try to get a job, they go off my resume. What's on my resume? The stuff that I've done. Yeah, they might listen to the stuff I'm going to do, but, but they're going to judge me off the stuff I've done. Mm -hmm. And if I go in there and say, well, I kind of tanked the last company I was with. Mm -hmm. We got... Ran you know, into the ground. Right, it's in the red right now because of me, which is why I'm here, because I need a new job. And I'm hoping that when I get Good here, analogy. I can, you know, bring the company up and put it into the black. And then mm -hmm. we can just, you know, brand ourselves as this big, giant, you know, corporation Oh, yeah, sure. Never You're mind hired. the fact that the company now, you just left this Destroyed. up in smoke. <laughs> right. Destroyed. Donald Trump. It's not how it works. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, yeah, Donald Trump is an exception right. because racism, got you him. got him where he is. Yes. So, you know, racism but, but, is but beneficial. But his resume is he's a failed businessman. Continue. Right. Um, and real quick, I want to uh, let everybody know real quick. We give uh, Economic tips here. Ford stock right now is at less than ten dollars. Sprint, who's going to be merging with T-Mobile very soon, is at eight dollars. General Electric is at ten dollars. And I want to thank my good dear friend Donovan for um, hooking me up to that stock because you sent that on Valentine's Day. I sure did. And I don't like subscribe to the whole Valentine's Day thing, but I was like, you know what? As a Valentine's Day gift, I'm yeah. buying myself some stock. Yes. And I bought into both of those stocks. Awesome. I sure awesome. did. I was like, shoot, you better follow what rich people do. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, for $6 <laughs> or $8 for Ford stock, historically, that company, if they ever got in trouble, which they do get in trouble, they will get bailed out by the United States because right. it's historic significance. But even if you have one stock, Buy that stock, give it to your kids, and let them feel as an owner. I got more than one stock. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> of so, each, one, yeah. more than one. So. And so, but good, good point. Donovan is, you know, trying to help us financially get into the stock market. You know, that's where a lot of money is made, where a lot of wealthy people. As we know, the stock market is a long-term um, long game. It's game. not a short-term mm -hmm. game. If you get, I mean, there's some that you can sure. do for the short term. But for the most part, rich people... Or people with some um, knowledge, they stay in even when the, the mm -hmm. market is bad, and then they buy up the stocks when it's cheap. When you know exactly. the the, the, the um, poor mentally thinking people are like, oh my gosh, you need to get out. And they're like, yeah, go no. get out. No. Take those in. stocks so I can buy them. Right, exactly. <laughs> and, 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 and usually, some of my wealth, if I had bills, I would like sell a bunch of my stock, half of it. We're not half of it. Or pay off some of the debt and pay off certain debts, or go on vacations. That's right? how I do you do it. So. I'm following rich people. Okay, there you go. And James says, I'd like to at least see what any of these candidates have to say about housing, especially in California and the Bay Area where Kamala is from. Mm -hmm. Well, all right, so podcast, we will see you guys or hear you guys next week. Thank you so much for being on here with us. It's always our pleasure. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, hit us up. Peace. Peace. And so, yes, well, I've heard Kamala say something like she wants to give everybody $500. Her step-up program. Her step-up program a month. I give, yeah, and then supplement it for the month. Give everybody $500 a month to supplement because of housing, especially in California. Housing is like, if you are, don't already, are you not already established, it's hard to live out here. It is. Like a lot of people are living with other people, helping to pay the bills because it's just hard. I mean, a, a, what, a one bedroom apartment in a decent area is what, sometimes 16, 1600 bucks. bucks? And, and we're not even in LA. And we're talking <laughs> about a one bedroom, yeah, not even in LA. So um, housing is just ridiculous out here. I mean, it's, it's like 
My daughter went to school in San Francisco up until Ooh. recently, and she was paying fifteen hundred dollars for a room. Just a room, yeah. Just a room. Right. I'm sorry, it wasn't fifteen hundred. It was eleven hundred dollars for a room. And no internet access. Yeah, I mean it was just a room, you know. But the point that I'm making, especially up north, and like you said, I mean, the housing is so bad because gentrification has come in, especially like up north, they have the tech industries that come in and they're buying out or pricing out the artsy people who are up there. Because San Francisco is known for its art and its culture. Yes, the culture. That stuff culture. is being um, eradicated. Yeah, eradicated due to the tech industries. You got your Amazons, your Googles, your Ubers, and all these are people up there. And those people need places to live and they, they can afford it. So if I'm an artist and I'm getting by on my paintings, I can't live in San Francisco anymore like I used to. Moving to Oakland. Yeah, even Oakland <laughs> is know, bad. That's where Barbecue Becky came mm -hmm. from. It's right. Oakland. She's in the hood now, mm -hmm. mad at people barbecuing on Sunday in the park, which is what they do <laughs> all the time. And she's mad because they're not using the right grill. Right. You know. Smokeless grill. That's Oakland. Mm -hmm. Where well, I was born in Oakland. You know, and... Oh, no wonder you're so damn revolutionary. Right, yeah, during the Black Panther movement. Yeah, I was, I was born out there. So, not that that has anything to do with me, mm -hmm. but the point that I'm making is Oakland was urban. Right. And now you got people coming in, boosting up the price, pricing black people out. But I'm friends with a guy out here, John Sanders is his name, and he is big in um, Baltimore with um, stopping the gentrification because he made a good point to me. He says California is done. Yeah, as far yeah. as black communities yeah. go, um, we don't really have a lot of them. It's some in L.A., but not like we used to. Yeah. And so Done. what they're trying to do is save the other black communities all over the country by stopping the gentrification. Yes. Because that's what happens is, you know, a lot of they people with out. money come in, move us out. And they're like, $2,500 for a one bedroom? Oh, that's nothing. But and for us, we're like, yo, we don't <laughs> even pay that in six months some places. Right. And, 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 and we say this on all our shows. Don't think we are not aware that all these other cultures that come to this country make their base off of us. Right. They but, come into our communities and right. we support them. Right. And they're pricing us out and yeah. we don't have the good sense to say, nah, I'm good. Right. And Tay says it's $800 to $1,000 for a room in Temecula. Damn. Now, Temecula is considered good real yeah. estate, if you will, but $1,000 for a room? Mm. Is you going to wash my clothes too? Mm, my mm, car, mm. usually because you're cooking for me too. Right, exactly. I mean, what did you That's doing what I would expect. For a thousand dollars. But here's a little tip, travel tip. I was in Vietnam living in the hotel, five star, four or five star, thirty dollars a day, free breakfast. Well, look at you. I'm just saying now now do the math on it. Oh, yeah. That's about six hundred dollars a month. But so I ain't gotta clean my room. So but to James's point, what are these politicians gonna do for housing? Right. You know, I heard one politician, he's running for president, he's an Asian guy, uh, I can't think of his name. But he's proposing to give everybody $1,000 a month to, as a stipend to live off of, to balance what's going on. Is he out of his mind? That's money being taken away from the wall. Well, you know what? Damn the wall. People need to eat. You no, know what we, I'm saying? We need, we need <laughs> billions and billions of dollars to build a wall rather than to feed people. Right. Where's, where are you guys' priorities? Right. And then uh, Al says, uh, Pastor Matthew regrets at times he has a church because his the bills are $2,000 and he doesn't. $200 a month in uh, monthly offerings. Well, God, lead. You know what? If Pastor uh, Thaddeus Matthews is watching, which I don't know if he is, but if he's watching, I would say this. Go online, brother. He's already online. I'd give mm -hmm. the church up. I know people need a building to go to, but if you're doing it to the detriment of yourself, you're getting $200 in offering, mm -hmm. and it costs you $2,000 to run the place. Mm -hmm. Hell, you rent a room every Sunday or something and go all online because, you know, most people don't go to church anyway. They go online, which is how we know of Pastor Thaddeus is right. online. And so that's the new meeting. But, you know, again, and, you know, I like Pastor Thaddeus because his message is really raw. But I think the problem that he's facing is, um, especially in our community, black people are starting to wake up. And so we're not doing the church thing mm -hmm. anymore. Right. You know what I mean? We're starting to, and I, and, and a guy that I impress upon you guys to um, watch on YouTube is Anthony Browder. Mm, okay. Please look at his work. Look at his work. He debunks the whole issue of Christianity and, you know, why black people um, should not believe in um, the white man's religion of Christianity, any religion for any reason, okay. you know. He also says, basically, you, you know, you believe in the spirits and you don't believe in yourself, you know, and, Damn, and, 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 deep. Uh, and all these man-made rules that come forth throughout the Bible. And, you know, a, a, a white Jesus who was hijacked from a um, came in Egypt, you know, and so, I mean, and he's like factual with this stuff. And so 
at some point in time, I think people are just starting to wake up. People are starting yeah. to say, church served a purpose. Yeah. You know, because I grew up in the church. I grew up in the Nation of Islam as well. So it, it served a purpose. I mean, you went there to learn how to be good, how to be a better person, this, that, and the other. But mm -hmm. the other part of it is there's so many people who are suffering in the church. Like, I'm coming to get the good word. I'm listening to Pastor So-and-so tell me, you know, just... Such a terrible person. Well, that, but just, just keep believing mm -hmm. and, you know, to come to you and all this other stuff. It's like, yeah, I want to keep believing, but I want to see some results mm -hmm. because I know people who are in the black church for years and they are no better off right. than they were 30 years ago. And I'm not even making this up. I know people who continuously go to church and they're still walking. Mm -hmm. They're still catching a bus. But they're listening to the pastor say, sow a seed of faith and you will get your blessing. Believe for that car was like, well, damn, I was believing for a 1979 mm -hmm. Chevette. Right. Now, yeah. They don't even make those no more. All gone. <laughs> now I'm believing for something in 2019. And so at some point in time, I just think we have to come to terms with, we need to try something else. And I think, that the uh, largest part, uh, and I'm going to leave, get out of here too, but I think the largest part for black people is we don't believe in ourselves mm -hmm. as a whole. Right. So we have we have to have something. And I think that the church angle gives us something tangible, kind of, sort of, to believe in. Because I don't care what you do, when a person has hope, like you tell me, Donovan, you're yeah. going to come over, I'm going to... I'm going to bring you something to eat. I'm starving. Right. I, you call me D. I'm coming over. I'm going to bring you some food. Okay, I'm mm -hmm. on my way. I'm hoping. So mm -hmm. I don't focus on the hunger as much anymore. Because okay. I'm hoping. And I'm like, well, gosh, she said an hour ago he was going to be here. He hasn't showed up. Hey, Donovan. Are you still coming? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm on my way, D. You just keep waiting. I'm on my way. Okay, so I'm hopeful again. Because yeah. I talked to you. Yes. You said you were going to do it. And then after a while, I'm like, God, I lost 20 pounds. <laughs> 20 years later, right? he hasn't showed up. Mm -hmm. But you keep telling me you're going to do it. So that's what it's like. So at some point in time, we have to start saying, okay, I need results. Now, am I going to wait for something out of the sky to give me the re these results? And believe me, I believe mm -hmm. in a higher power. I'm not saying that. Sure. Or am I going to go get it myself? And so um, Al says, uh, two hundred dollars a month. Yeah, I mean, you're getting two hundred dollars a month in offerings. People are, hey, people are struggling. I can't give you ten percent of what I make, and I can't pay my rent. Mm -hmm. Hell, trying to get ten percent out of people living in California. That's why you gotta have faith, sister. No, I ain't gonna have no faith because the landlord ain't on that bullshit. The landlord's <laughs> like, I need my money every month. Gotcha. gotcha. Listen, man, I get ten percent of my money away. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, we'll just wait. Yeah, we'll just wait for it. No problem. I'm waiting for that seed of faith to come up. Yes. Uh, and so uh, Tay says, here's my question. If not Christianity, then what? Well, we know as um, our, our ancestors or our people in Africa, our roots, they prayed and worshiped ancestors. Who are our ancestors? Well, like me, I call my mom an ancestor. I mm -hmm. call upon my mom and my grandmothers all the time. And I ask for wisdom. Now, are they speaking to me like I'm speaking to you? No, they're not. But when I say I call upon them, a lot of stuff that my mom used to tell me and my grandmothers used it's to tell me has, has come to my um, recollection. I remember the things they used to tell me. And so I use those things um, to help guide me throughout my day or whatever it is I'm trying to do. And I, every morning I say, thank you, God, for the blessings. Thank you, ancestors, for the lessons. That's something I say every day because um, I don't see my mom as dead, if you will. Now, physically, she's not here Transform. anymore. But my mom, her, her essence is still here. And so... That's what we need to believe in. And more than anything, we need to believe in ourselves. Reverend Ike, not your Ike, but Reverend <laughs> Ike, the great um, pastor, uh, theologian, uh, prosperity preacher in the 60s and 70s and 80s, said, how are you going to believe in a God in the sky, a man you've never mm -hmm. seen, and you don't believe in yourself? And so at some point in time, we have to start believing in ourselves. And that's why I said as black people, we don't believe in ourselves, which is why we don't believe we can ever surmount the things that we go through as far as poverty. Hell, we got the money. We got $1.3 trillion and growing in the black community, but we just don't, um, we don't handle it right. For example, mm -hmm. we always talk about um, how we think the white man's ice is colder than ours. So we believe that their thing is better 
than our brother or our sister. So we give our money to them opposed to keeping it in our communities. Mm -hmm. So we don't we don't believe in ourselves. Donovan is selling something and the white man is selling something. Well, I'm going to go over here because you know how the black people be acting. I don't trust him. Right. You know, I'm not saying some of that is not but, I deserve the type, not deserve, but earn some of the reputation we have. Sure. But. Hey, I only cut my dope with some baking soda. You know what? <laughs> That's it. He's joking. <laughs> right. Okay. And Al says, so is he. The, so, so is he. Some can't sew a button on their shirt. Well, <laughs> right about that. But they think that they're doing that by sacrificing their livelihood. Listen, I don't suggest anybody go sow a seed of faith, especially if it is uh, attached to your rent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. If it's attached to your car payment, do not sow that seed. Uh, I think the Lord has said you got to pay Caesar his tithes, pay your bills. Yeah, you your bring bills. it on to Caesar what is Caesar. That's what mm -hmm. the Bible says. So it means don't take from Caesar to take care of something um Perhaps in the church, you got to, God. I don't think has ever told you to um, take from your own situation. Because I know people have done that, and then they come asking me for some money. Yes, yes, I get that all the time. You know, our payback Friday. Friday comes, you never hear from them. You up in and then they have the nerve to ask you for more money that Tuesday. But you up in there hooping and howling up in the church. Ooh, glory! I'm sorry. 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 Yes, sir. I mean, I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. And so, hey, Gloria, so my apologies, sister. I just got online as my internet was down for my home computer. Let's go. <laughs> well, you know what? I, I understand things happen. I wouldn't worry about it. Mm -hmm. We're actually going to only be here about another five minutes. And so yes. if you guys have any questions uh, or comments or concerns, please ask me now. Um, and we can go ahead and talk about it. So mm -hmm. anything that comes in your mind that needs to be discussed? Yeah, I, I should have wrote it down. Uh, there was something I was going to ask you that was very... Oh, 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 that's what I want to talk about real, 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 real quick. You guys, uh, we talked about in the, in the beginning of the show the EFF and what was going on right there, what's going on in South Africa. We are going to be following that, that trend. And we want you guys to know, because we are moving on up, we will be broadcasting from South Africa sometime this year. It just depends on how those elections turn out. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because Donovan is scared of getting kidnapped. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm... They ain't going to kidnap me. <laughs> you know who my daddy is? Well, you think Liam Neeson was bad when his yeah. daughter got taken. Right, and, 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 <laughs> and, 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 here's, and here, here's a disclaimer. If I come back from South Africa without D, it's not because something happened to her. She wanted to stay. <laughs> okay, so. That's right. I'm, I'm, I'm but, rolling with my people. But but again, you know, we always try to tell you guys, stop talking about doing stuff and just go do it. Right. And just go do it. Just so. go do it. And so, yeah. And so um, I don't see any more um, questions or comments. But, yeah, I mean, you know, at some point in time, we did. And, you know, I, I could say at some point in time, but black people are starting to wake up. And that is a beautiful thing. Yes. We are starting to wake up. We are no longer, as I say, Suffering from the night quail for Negroes. We are no longer uh, drowsy. Well, we're a little drowsy still, but, but, but we're not completely. We're getting confident. the coal out of our eyes. We're getting the coal out of our eyes, and we're seeing that all we have is us. us. No politician, no pastor. None of those people are going to save oh. us overall. They're just not going to. We are going to have to save our. Mm -hmm. That's just the way it is. Absolutely. It's the way it is. Nobody's going to come throw us a life. I mean, you know, like I said, we hear all these politicians talking about reparations. Well, you know what? Let's just assume it, a reparations will never come. We haven't gotten them yet. We haven't gotten them yet. You know, what are we going to do in the meantime? Are we Thank going you. to start pooling our money together? As I said, we are in the midst of income tax season. A lot of us will get the money and we will go buy the Gucci stuff or Jordan. Or have we learned we have a debt ceiling crisis coming up now? Right. Well, you know, people who are, a lot of people are just not cognizant of a debt ceiling or anything regarding the past shutdown. People just got caught with the pants down, if you will. And so, you know, nobody, they could pro promise us a lot of stuff. Yeah, you know, we're going to get the you know, reparations for black people. We're going to do this because black people have been suffering since. Yeah, okay, yeah, we know all that. Just write the check, goddammit. Yeah, cut the check. We don't, listen, cut you don't check. even need to be the president to do the shit. Mm -hmm. You know, go to Congress. Like Kamala and them, they're now um, at, at the, the, the final stages of getting the anti lynching law. No, no, yeah. That's passed. right. It, it has yeah. to go to the House. So it's got to go to the House. They're at the final stages of getting the anti lynching law passed. Like, great. However, 
That is a dog or a bone for the dog to keep him distracted. You ever mm-hmm. give your dog a bone? I don't have a dog, but Donovan has a dog. Mm-hmm. You give the dog a bone to keep him distracted. That's not a dog. Excuse me. <laughs> you give the dog a bone to keep it distracted and keep it satisfied for a while. Mm-hmm. And so that's what that that anti-lynching bill is that uh, Kamala and Corey and Tim Scott, these are all senators, have fashion to Murder keep one. yeah to keep black people distracted. Oh gosh, baloney. We got our anti-lynching law. As I said before, follow the bouncing ball. Ball. Um, Is lynching murder? Murder one. Is murder already a Capital One offense? Yes, What is is Capital One? It's a federal offense. So murder Murder is, lynching is already Um, illegal. Why don't you, why to see your ass up into there and then write some laws or something, some real reparation laws. This this is why they need to uh, sit their asses down and wait to run again. And then here's another thing. For all my people who've been sending me these nasty emails, mostly sorority folks and stuff that don't support me. Do what um, Roland Barton said. Kiss my black ass. (laughs) Anyway, uh, no. um, Okay. Trump just declared a national emergency for for an emergency that doesn't exist. So if, okay, Kamala's going to win. Let's just say it's not going to happen. Let's say she does. Right. Are we going to hold her to to declare a national emergency for black people and reparations? What's black people? Right. Right. And then that's what you guys got to ask yourself. So think about that. Will she get up there and say, I'm declaring a national emergency for the black community within the United States? No. Give me some money. Give me a you know a couple trillion. No, and that's why I said. I mean, we can hate on Trump all you want. He's a douchebag. I'm not saying mm-hmm. he's not. He is. But right. at least Trump is bringing home the bacon for his people. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He took to them and Cole to call him an idiot because he won't continue to have the country shut down right. to harm people who need to work. You know. And you know, and 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 I'm an equal opportunist. I'm gonna give him some props because if it wasn't for Trump, we would still be asleep at the wheel. Right. And then uh, let's see. And our uh, Marcus says our internet just came back on, so please continue if you can for people to interact. I'll continue, sure, I'll continue sure. until Donovan keeps me out of the studio. Sure, absolutely. And then, um, and then uh, Alex she says I'm so late. No, you're not. You're on time. On time. And Alex says roses are red, violets are blue. Are you going to the J Lo Taste of Soul? <laughs> <laughs> you're wrong for that. No, you're wrong for that. Don't you ever. <laughs> Grammys. I don't watch you, but I saw. Well, no, she's doing the Motown review. All over the country. I saw what she did to Tina, uh, Tina uh, Marie song, Square Biz. Was it terrible? I horrible. Was it horrible? And I don't care what nobody said. We could fight if y'all want to. Tina Marie is black. <laughs> I, I'm not going to fight with you. Fight me. I'm not going to fight with you. I'm not. She's, yeah. has got a lot of soul. Uh, R.I.P. Tina Marie. She was mm. a white woman, a black woman in a white woman's body. Okay, yes. I don't Very care what nobody says. She's saying. more soulful than a lot and, of And uh, another thing, too, here. is people don't know this, but Tina loved the minister. She loved the minister Farrakhan. In fact, she wrote a song for him called mm-hmm. um, Dear Black Man. Mm-hmm. And he used it on one of uh, his, his uh, recordings. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, they was, yeah, that was his girl. All right. <laughs> that was his girl, okay? Okay. So, but yeah. Right well, we wasn't, okay, so Marcus says, just an idea. South Africans are going through land expor- expropriations mm-hmm. without compensation. Yes, And it's going right. to be taking a massive effect from now over the next few years the one thing we sh- uh, know, oops, the one thing we know should um, Africans take back their land is that they will be abandoned by investment. Here is a massive opportunity for black on black investment opportunities for black people to create a partnership with African landowners um, to do a great many things. Yeah, well, the expropriations, expropriations mm-hmm. without compensation is that of, um, let's say, Julius Malima and the EFF. Um, economic freedom fighters, they are saying, listen, we are no longer waiting for Cyril Ramaphosa, who is the president of um, the ANC, South Africa, to move on our behalf. We elected him, and Julius Malema said that to him in the beginning. We are trusting you. We're mm-hmm. trusting you to do the right thing. Don't get up in here and give us lip service like all the other presidents have, have done, because that's, that's exactly why the president, the last president is out of mm-hmm. here, because what he says, and he's not apologetic about it, is that you guys are uh, catering to white people. You are scared of white people. They've got white people in the cabinet. Got white people in the cabinet. He said in one, um, um, I think last week, he being Julius Malin was like, yo, you got all these cabinets, you know, they're not doing anything. They're taking up resources. Mm-hmm. They're not doing anything. Right. 
You know, we need results. We're not getting results. You're taking too long, President Ramaphosa, to do what you said you're going to do. And, and, so, and it isn't even like taking long. It's making the decree and start distributing the land. Right. And so Julius Malima and his party is saying, listen, playtime is over. Mm -hmm. We are now going to take the land. Yeah, we're at this point. It's done. Right. From the white South Africaners. And we're not giving them any money. Because the government was wanting to pay them to the tune of $20 million. Well, the, 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 the white Africaners, Capricaners, were asking for $20 million for the land. But the government is like, we'll give you $8 million. I'm like, well, yeah. why not give that $8 million to black people? So to your point, Marcus, yes, we should be investing in Africa. The only problem I have with that is right now in America, because let's, let's just keep it real. Marcus Garvey tried to get black people to go back to Africa, and some say, yeah, they would go, but black people Liberia. ain't going back to Africa. Yeah, Liberia. 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 Black people overall are not going back to Africa, not now. And so I think we should try to focus on, not try, but we should focus on fixing what we have going on here. Yes, we should keep an eye over there in Africa, South Africa, what's going on, all over Africa, really. But I'm thinking if the government is going to give white people $8 million for the land, why not give it to black people? So yeah. I get what Malima is saying with to, uh, Cyril Ramaphosa. You're placating the white people. Right. You want to pay them? They came over and stole it for, from us. Mm -hmm. Why are we giving? Why are we going to pay them for it? Right. They and, got somewhere to go back to. And and, and then uh, at this point, a lot of people with you, know, you and you guys need to really uh, follow what's going on in the African continent because what affects them, it's almost mirror to what we're dealing with here. But we just think, oh, we're in a better situation, and we're really not. Um, uh, Molina has, has said this. The land is owned by the government. Right. He says, okay, they're giving you this paper. Now, if you're a black person, and they distribute the land, and they give you this paper, and the white people control all the wealth, that paper, you're hungry now. So they give you, let's say, a $100,000 house that you could occupy. Right. But the white guy comes in there and says, well, I've got... $10,000. That's a lot of money to you because you never had money before. Right. So the land is going to go right back. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, it's smart. It's, yeah, I mean. You know, and we're asking for $8 million, but we're only going to give you 10000 Right. You know? Right. So, yeah, I mean, that to me, I, like I always say, I mean, I love you, Al, but Julius Malima is my intellectual crush. I, and Donovan, I always tell him that all the time, <laughs> I love Julius Malima because that dude is like ride or die. I'm apologetic. Yes. You're like, we are not waiting for you guys to do right by us. We've been waiting for, what, 30 years? 30 years since, so, since, the, uh, since, Mandela. since Mandela took office. We've been waiting and waiting and waiting. Like, we're going to be dead waiting so long. Right. If, if you guys uh, have time uh, later on, please check out uh, on YouTube, Demetra K uh, on YouTube. There is a video where she's talking. You can hear actually Melina talking about you know, the situation and what Donald Trump has said, the white people over there have a, appealed to Donald Trump to step in. And he's pretty much saying it, it might come a time where Donald Trump does step in to help the white people in South Africa. Right. It doesn't matter. He was basically like, we're going to have to die at one right. point. In time. Somebody's going to we'll, die. Yeah, it might as well be for what we believe right. in. Right. And so Al says, Deion Sanders and Shamar um, uh, Moore love the minister. Yeah, they, mm -hmm. they're, they you know, speaking out that the minister has been instrumental in their life. And then... Um, Marcus says, I truly believe that the land grab is the only time you will be able to 100% um, be black on black invested with all dollars going to black people. It's not going to happen in the United States. No, I, 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 no I, not when it comes to black people. I agree with you on that one. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think that is something worth looking into it, to invest um, in Africa. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I mean, they have the power. I mean, Don, Donovan was talking about this the other day. The ANC holds about 285 seats. seats. The mm -hmm. um, DA. They're the third largest. Yeah. Uh, they, uh, the, the DA party, they uh, have about 80 seats. And then uh, EFF holds about 25. And so mm -hmm. they have an election coming up in May. Will the, uh, the uh, EFF take over? Probably not. Probably but not. But to they your will point, increase more seats. They will increase more seats. But to Donovan's point, 80% of Africa, you know, um, what, they're black. And many of them are poor. So as well, it's like 80% of Africa, South Africa is black and they own less than 10% of the wealth. And so it's definitely a plantation type situation going on there. Mm -hmm. So maybe there's enough people to be disgruntled enough to say, you know what, let's give um, Julius Malima and his party a shot. And actually what's actually happening is people are just having enough of it and they're starting to take homes and stuff. And the white people are starting, not necessarily, it's not like uh, large scale killings, but people are starting to occupy land because it, it's the weirdest thing. If you guys follow this. They have, let's say, 100 acres 
of open field. It's not being cultivated. It's not right. farmland. So the black people are going there and squatting. Right. And the government is coming and knocking these little shanty towns that they already live in already. Right. It, I mean, it's crazy. Right. So, you know, they're going to have to take mm -hmm. it. They're going to gonna have to take it. Mm -hmm. And Marcus says, the thing is, you cannot fix what has happened here. There is no opportunity to be 100% in ownership of anything they did. Uh, uh, did they can take any time they prefer. Um, we may not be going back to Africa as a people, but surely we can have the common sense to go and learn how to invest amongst our own. No, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, how the Chinese are doing it. Chinese are going over there. in Africa, right? They, they are deep in Africa. Right. They are, you know, planting roots. Mm -hmm. And so pretty soon it will be China if we don't step in, you know. And, and that's another argument the Africaners, the white people are making. Oh, well, if we're not here, you're going to let the Chinese come in. Well, if the Chinese are going to give me a better situation, why not? Correct. Yeah, I mean, and, and that's what's going on, mm -hmm. you know. And then um, you say also Marcus, Mr. Uh, Julius Malima has extended his hand to Africans in America to join the EFF in a global way. If we are serious, then here is the olive branch. No, absolutely. Um, D is a member. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I sent them, actually, it's a true story. Uh, last week, I actually was reading their stuff and stuff like that, and I sent them an email, and I said, we are watching the events there, and we will be, the Demetri K Show will be in South Africa after the elections. And uh, they responded, and, and I told them, you know, I'm very supportive of what they're doing, and you're very supportive of what they're doing, so. See, there you have it, Marcus. We own it. We are on it. So, yeah, I impress upon uh, many people to learn about the EFF, Julius Malima, them mm -hmm. over there in South Africa. And he has, to your point, reached out to us. He says, you know, as I said on the show the other day, we are one. You know, we are one. We are one. At the end of the day, our struggle is their struggle and vice versa. And so we need to be um, educated about what's going on in Afri Africa because, hey, one day we might need to go back there. But what are we going to go back to? Right. And, and then my thing is that, you know, um, I'm supportive of what they're doing because I stand up for what's right. Right. Now, how it ends up and ends play, it just doesn't make sense to me. Do you compensate a burglar after he's burglarized your house? No, but so to your point, that's why the EFF is like, yo, y'all got to get up. Y'all mm -hmm. sitting up here, you know, <laughs> tiptoeing around white people. Oh, let's work together. Let's try to get them and see what they're... You have no. 30 years to do that. Yeah, even 30 years. I mean, it's God, God. 30 years. Don't be like us over here. Mm -hmm. You know, don't, don't do what we're doing. We need to do what you guys are doing. And then, let's see. Uh, uh, hi, uh, um, Eileen. And EFF means Economic Freedom Fighters. Yes. That is a um, um, political party in Africa is one of three. Um, and so they are new. They formed in 2013 mm -hmm. when... Uh, oh, I'm getting sick, you guys. Hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> um, they formed... In 2013, when Julius Malima, he was actually one of the youngest members of the mm -hmm. ANC when he joined when he was 10. So he was a youth leader, but he was put well, out in 2013 for hate speech. Yes. Well, so what, then he formed the EFF. Yes. Yeah, so what was Julius Malima's first job? His first, he was a, was he a spokesperson no. or what was he? When he first joined at 10 years old, his first job was to go go around and pull down Oh, yes, uh, yes, signs. yes. Pull down flyers and stuff. Yes, yeah, that was the job. signs of, of opposition people. That's how he started, <laughs> but then he uh, he rose so they, to... So they created a monster. Correct. They create, <laughs> they, so the ANC did create a monster, but he rose to prominence within the ANC, but however, um, he got too big for his britches, if mm -hmm. you will. He wasn't going along with the talking points. Mm -hmm. He was kind of the Nat Turner of the party. Right. You know, all right. <laughs> this sound good, but we we ain't going nowhere. No. We're just treading water. Yeah, and, and like I said, 30 years. I mean, I don't blame him for being... Correct. You know, like, hey, you this guys problem. had your shot. Right. Yeah. And then our, uh, Marcus says, I mean, let's be honest. America's fine-tuned machine. Nothing will ever change here. No one will ever do the work to change it. We know the basic things to do, and we failed to do them. So uh, how are we going to get uh, black people to do the hard things? Something radical has to take place, and these things... Are radical measures that I'm talking about. Well, let me ask you this too. Are you welcome, Eileen? Let me ask you this, because Marcus Garvey, um, Marcus, your namesake, Marcus mm -hmm. Garvey, said that there are black people over here in America that are no good here, and so no doubt there'll be no good over there. So my point mm -hmm. is this: like, what are we gonna if we if we don't change our attitude here, we just gonna get over there and f up the rotation in Africa. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. We well, all take our ways over there and it's just, it's going to be the same thing. So it's like, 
maybe everybody ain't picked the well, goal. Well, well, the president of uh, South Africa right now, this guy was a lawyer, and he had enriched himself in business transactions. Right. The guy has over $200 million, if not more. Right. And he's enriching his cronies and his friends. I mean, so it isn't like these people are prehistoric or, you know, you know, back right. in the day off the plantation. These are some very high educated people that know what they're doing. And he's doing like what most politicians do. They get in office and they enrich themselves. Sells, right. And he's That's what they do. Tomorrow. Yeah. And, and the Molima warned him against that. He says when he first got on, when Cyril Ramaphosa first got on, he Molima warned him, don't think you're going to get in here and enrich yourself and you know, come up on the backs of these mm -hmm. people. We elected you because you said you were going to get in there and do work. And then here is what, like a year or so later, later. that he's been in there. Mm -hmm. It's the same. And in fact, like you said, you've created all these positions. The, yeah. um, the minister Under of this, the uh, minister of that, mm -hmm. the minister. But you're not doing anything with these positions. You're just, people got titles and I'm sure they're getting paid. Yes. You know, and so to me, it's a lot of fun to watch the parliament take place. Yeah, the yeah that one lady's always. always yeah, because I guess she's the speaker of the house, and yeah. she's always telling Malima, "Well, you can't say that. Do not say that. We want you to do not attack from members. Saying, yeah, do not attack members." And the last one I watched, the white one of the white dudes in the parliament was like, "Listen, <laughs> while we don't agree with what he's saying, stop interrupting the him. Let him finish so he can sit down. It's chaos in the gallery. Right." right. Right. Just, just let them finish, okay? So, yeah, and, and, and they're, they're saying that a civil war, white people are arming, so make no mistake about that. Right. So after these elections, it's going to tell us a lot. And a lot of people have been asking me in regards to the military options, will NATO step in? Will the European Union step in? And Molina addressed that. He says, whoever steps in, bring it. Bring it, bring, bring it, it, bring it on. Because it's it's gonna happen. Yeah, no he basically we saying we're not scared. Yeah, our heart don't pump no Kool Aid. We are not scared of you guys. I mean, hell, we scared. We're gonna like you're gonna be scared of what could happen, but you're not more scared of what's going on now. What's going on right now? You can't feed your babies. Yeah. You have no infrastructure. You're just living you're a slow poverty. death now. Right. Right. And so Mark says that the one thing about black people is we are rare to get in on the investment opportunity, but we are quick to spend all of our money on what we think is good, a good product. So like-minded individuals um, need to go and lay the foundation. If you notice one thing, you rarely see um, anything promoted to the African community about Africa. There right there is a business opportunity in itself. Well, yeah. It is a business opportunity. Yes, and, and, and here's the thing with, with that, Marcus, and we said it earlier in the show. I don't know mm -hmm. if you were on at the time. The way that you can uh, get involved in international stock, you got to get involved in international stocks. And some of them are expensive, $300, $400, sometimes $1,000. Right. But that's how you do it, and then you have a say. And I said earlier today, Ford stock is trading at less than $10, $6 a share. Yeah. Uh, Sprint stock, the Sprint stock is less about $10, and uh, as we know, Sprint is going to merge with uh, T-Mobile. That stock is going to be $60, if not $100 or more, because that now reduces your cellular companies in the United States. Right. It'll be down to two major cellular companies. So that stock is going to go out the window. Uh, General Electric, they're down at $10. Historic low. Get in right. on it. Absolutely. And so we hear you, Marcus. But anyway, um, I don't see any more comments. Right on. And so um, I will um, get ready to get out of here. If I see any more comments, I will That's address great. them. So anyway, um, buy YouTube. Buy Facebook. iHeartRadio. Uh, iHeartRadio. Are we still on? No. Oh, okay. 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 Well, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Spotify Spreaker, yeah. Pod, B, B, B Pod, Podcast, Godly. Or is there any place we're not? Uh, the White Aryan Nation Network. We, we're, we're trying, to get, white, we're trying yeah. to get on the White <laughs> Aryan Nation <laughs> Network. Yes. Yes. I mean, I guess. Why not? You know? Why not? So anyway, please, um, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, hit us up. We will be more than happy to address them. If you have a topic you want us to address, oh, I will do the research. It'll be me. Yes. Do the research um, and bring it back here. We'll chop it up and see what we can learn, um, if anything new. Also, please follow us on YouTube. I am at the Demetra K. Uh, Demetra K on YouTube. Donovan is at Donovan Sadiq. And there's also one uh, news from Edgemont. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have a lot of things going on. Uh, we have a lot of, we do a podcast on Tuesdays where we talk about other issues that we don't necessarily talk about here. Me and Donovan chopping it up. I think we do a pretty good job. And so if job. you guys want more information of more what we have, we do here, please go to those things. Um, and yeah, um, 
like us, follow us, chat with us or whatever the case is. And so anyway, we are going to get out of here. As you guys can see, I am getting sick and I never get sick. Get some soup and get some This will last juice. only today. Promise you, I'm going to drink some more green juice. Yeah. And so anyway, I will see you guys later. Please have a great day. Stay warm because in California, it's freezing. freezing. All right. So peace.